What's going on? Hey, man, it's a nice fish writer. Get the f out of here. Come on, a fish writer. You're stupid. Damn, 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 damn. When you start attacking another, yo, my yo, y'all better get this right because I ain't got yo, nothing. Please, yo, please. Nobody don't got time for this. Yo, get this old ass right you off. Give my Campus deal. Buckle up the antiques, guys. We have a man who's brought in a piece of the Victorian century to sell at the pawn shop. Get ready for a blast from the past. I thought this was one of the coolest compasses I have ever seen. It had brass around it. It was really in immaculate condition. How much would you really take for this thing? 150? It's an early century antique. I don't believe there's a great many out there. No matter how much you like the item, our lessier decides to do a little investigation before pulling out the big bucks and take a look at what he finds out. There are huge collectors out there. I think I can make money on this thing if I can get it at the right price. He wants 150 and here you can buy it on the internet for $33. I was surprised at the price. Oh. Oh my, it seems we've uncovered a big old cheat. Now that we know the truth, let's gather our courage and confront the seller. Get ready for a showdown. I've been doing this a long time. Do I look like a idiot? No. How much you have it listed for on the internet? Yes, don't yes. think we're yes. stupid. I understand. Come on, I understand. no you don't. Because it's very rare that I get fooled. Here's the way it works. Take your compass, and get your ass out of my store. Refrigerator. Well, 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 guess what we stumbled upon? A person. Yeah, a real life human being lurking inside a refrigerator. Now that's one way to stay cool in a store. What the f are you doing? I'm just checking out this fish writer. I've heard of this situation happening before. People hiding in trunks, in suitcases, in cabinets. They wait until the store closes and then they rob the place. Our fella takes refrigerator admiration to the next level by boldly sitting inside. Talk about being a big Ice Age fan, huh? Just cut to the chase, man. You gonna buy it? I was thinking about buying it. Don't you know me check it out by looking at it, not testing it out? Sometimes. What are we gonna do, rob us? This mother is not getting away with it. Not here. Get ready, everyone. An exciting scene unfolded when the store owners confronted a potential thief. What an electrifying clash we're about to witness. Come on, man. You kind of remind me of like a crackhead Snoop Doggy dog. So you right now, you take another step, it's gonna be your last step of walking. Were you gonna stay in there all night and come out in the night? What if this guy is part of a bigger team? I'm worried. I need to figure out a solution and talk to my dad. Fake diamonds. This thrilling episode of Hardcore Pawn features a woman claiming her niece gifted her some earrings from their store. Oh, let the drama begin. First problem, you don't have the receipt. Second of all, no cash. on the receipt, it says no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. Everything got off to quite a normal start until the lady customer was asked about the receipt. Yeah, apparently she was looking for a pass on that. Talk about being delusional. Two options, you, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. Nine, Second, one, option. Four. Second option what? is you can get the receipt and then ain't no can mother you finish me. listening. It ain't can no you finish listening. No, can no. It's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. It was like a verbal storm. As far as a reaction goes, well, let's just say it was quite the showstopper. Let's see how Ashley handled the situation. This is Joe. Joe. How are you He's going to the front door. Wait a mother minute, now get your hands off. I guess you're leaving. Con artist. Buckle up for this one. An overconfident individual walks in claiming to have big cash to buy something. His grand entrance sets the tone for this bizarre encounter. Let me see this one right here, this one right Sorry. here. That's platinum. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, now this is real nice right here. I think I could look good when I go out with this. That one's sharp. How much is this one right here? Five ninety nine. Oh no, oh down, baby. Hold on, folks, because this is one roller coaster of a ride. Our protagonist believes he's holding a fortune enough to buy a $500 watch. It's a $2 bill. Okay, and it's worth $2,000. It's rare to find a $2 bill that got red in it. Now tell me they ain't worth $2,000. I'm about to go deaf right now. Oh, don't, don't piss off who got it. This fellow insists that a humble $2 bill is worth a whopping $2,000. Give me a break. 
This dude better be on drugs for this to make sense. Who you want, ball my $2 bill up? Uh, you know what? Okay. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay. You owe bologna sandwich. Y'all ain't got no money. You okay. know what I'm have a good day. Please have Big a good Big Mouth. Big Mouth is hungry. <laughs> You're hilarious. Real funny, man. Y'all be killing me. I pawn you. Gift card. In a sadistic twist, a customer enters waving $100! invisible phone. In a daring attempt to find the perfect gift for her son, a woman decides to venture into the pawn shop, but little did she know what awaited her there. I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Okay. Where the hell is my f phone? Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my, f did you take my phone? Take your phone. There was never a phone on the showcase. <laughs> Well, folks, it appears our big mama's stealth skills might need a tune-up. However, did you see her put a phone there? <laughs> Not me. I ain't crazy, crazy damn it. I just yo, laid my phone yo. there. Don't touch me, yo. yo you better yo, get you off me, because I You hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't touch me, yo. There was no phone on the counter. Can someone just ask this woman to keep it down a bit? It looked like she was indeed trying to pull a scam. However, this is how she decides to take cover. When you start attacking another customer in the store, you have got to get out. Yo, my yo, y'all better get this lady because I ain't got no, nothing. Please, yo, please, listen. Nobody don't got time for this, yo. Get this old ass lady you off get my Looking for boyfriend. A girl visits the pawn shop on the hunt for her beloved boyfriend. Can you guess where she might find him? Oh, you got it. It's none other than the store itself. Talk about a stroke of genius. I'm sorry, but who are you? you? Just get him for me. Mm -hmm. And so what's this regarding? Um, he's my boyfriend and he's out paying child support. You're That's his girlfriend? I yes, I need him. So don't you have a cell phone number? Could you just get Chad, please? I do have a Chad that works here, but I don't have time for this today. Our girl meets Seth, who's in a funny mood today. Get her ready for a humorous encounter that'll surely make you laugh. It's time for some entertainment. Come on, grab Chad for me. His lovely girlfriend's here. Like, I got all day to just be wasting Keep, my time. This young lady would like to see you. That's not him. Y'all playing games with me now? That's Chad. No, that's not. Then I don't know. I know who I sleep with. What? This lady is out of her mind. Well, apparently, lady, they've got the wrong Chad. So you better take your business elsewhere. Or you've just started looking like a scammer. It's going nowhere fast. Oh, you're talking about Chad. The tall guy with the waves. Yeah, Chad. He just went outside. He's right out there. Y'all wanna sit here and play with me? If this was Chad's girlfriend, I have one piece of advice, Chad. Run away. Where the f he at? Watch that. Tressa, the ex-employee, decides to stroll back into the pawn shop with a Rolex watch in tow. Guess what? It's the one her boyfriend paid for. The guy that bought it for you disputed the credit card. No, he didn't. I, here, I can put him on the phone for you. Hold on, Tressa. He did dispute it. He's never been paid for the watch. I can give you a loan today for a thousand, but. Things heat up quickly between the ladies as Tressa and the shop owner engage in a fiery exchange. How about we skip everything to the dispute paperwork? They mailed him a piece of paper to close the dispute. Do you have the form on you? No, but I can call him. Okay, so when you get the form, Just I can give you a loan for the thousand on the watch. So I can give you the loan that, for the that, thousand. That's stealing. Disputed. It's not fully paid for right now. Until we receive the paperwork. You're wrong right now. Now, let's all hope she can gather her dignity and retrieve that slip to claim her hard-earned cash from the pawn shop. It was time for a little redemption. Let's do the thousand dollar loan, and then I'll be back with the paperwork. Honest to God, you are so wrong. <laughs> not a nice person. That's nice to say to your, how old are you? Look how you're treating me I'm in front of my kid. Home. Where's Nikki? The lady has arrived at the pawn shop saying one of the workers valued her earrings. And now she's just demanding the estimated price. What a mind wreck, I gotta say. Who'd you talk to? Nicole. Over the phone. Yes, ma'am. But we don't see them over the phone. She is lying. Can I see your merchandise while I'm at work and while you're sitting in your living room? You need to come in, you need to evaluate your earrings, we need to test them. Where's Nikki at? Nikki. Nikki, Nicole. Ashley, ever the detective, was in suspicion mode, attempting to dissect the situation. However, the customer's reaction swiftly threw a wrench into her gears. Listen, it's real diamonds. All I know is I need my 400. I'm looking at the diamonds, and I know right off the bat the weight is just not going to make it. I can do 185. So what you're saying is you're not going to give me that $400, right? No, I'm not. And you're not going to come in here demanding money from me. Yes, the I am, because that's what I called for. Well, it appears our lady has raised some eyebrows about her sanity. 
The idea of consulting Nikki to identify this loudmouth was now on the table. What is this? Excuse me, this is Nikki, and Nikki, she claims she talked to you at 10 o'clock this morning. I don't even know her. I need my mother money right now! She was very confused, but I know one thing for certain, Nana needed to go-go. Phone call lady. This one time, an elderly woman disrupted the quiet at the pawn shop with her booming phone conversation. Oh boy! To Ashley, her voice was nothing more than a symphony of annoyance. You ain't supposed to be talking to me like that either. Who the hell you think you talking to? No, I'm talking to you. Ma'am. You know what? You know what? Ma'am. You know what? Excuse me, I'm on the phone. I know, but you you're know? Uh, No, I'm not. I'm excuse a, hold me. on, hold on. Miss, I'm on the phone, okay? okay Can hey. you respect my privacy? Yeah. Let me step the back if you live too close. What's the matter with you, lady? You're in a public place. This ain't your backyard. You better keep your volume down or take your business elsewhere. Duh. Miss, get somebody to help me, please. What do you need help with? I'm need some help with my rings right here. Can you take here. off I your rings? Wait, you just walking up on me to my kid. You see my rings? I don't even know who you is. You want me to help you? I don't walk I up on me. I can help you now. Do not walk up on me. Or else what? Okay, keep walking to find out. This lady was probably angry with someone else and had decided to make this pawn shop a stage for her little vet session. Well, here's how Ashley took control of the situation. Now, can somebody help me other than you? No. All right, that. Don't follow me no more. I won't come back in this bitch. All the motherfucking times I've been coming in here giving y'all my motherfucking And this is how I'm getting treated? y'all. I told you I I don't know who the hell this lady was mad at. you. 70s PC. Two older folks enter the pawn shop with 1970s computers. They hope to sell them to fund a trip out west. Let's see if they were able to enjoy the blast from the past. Got some equipment here. So how much are you looking for? About $900. To be honest, if you bought these new, it's about like 400 bucks. We need more than that. Yeah, we need more than that. Um, what I can offer you is zero. Zero. Things took a sudden turn. And honestly, it felt like we stumbled into some reality TV treat. Buckle up, because this pawn shop just got a lot more interesting. <laughs> Zero. Most people don't get that aggravated when they bring in like ancient artifacts. Yeah, people want... collecting. Oh, they're antiques now. We'll take 800. Zero. That's the How many times do I need to tell no, you? We're not interested in it. Leave the store. I ain't taking I'm not it out taking of this it. Store. Well, fellas, y'all better just use it to scroll some pictures of the out west because I probably think that trip's now canceled. F you and f you. F you too. Oh, man. I thought it's a you, I man. I didn't have that. Put it in the dumpster. Put it down in your mama. She slap. Our big boy seeks an appraisal for a ring. And guess who he stumbles upon? None other than Ashley, the queen of quotes in this pawn shop. This ring right here, I wanted to get it appraised, see how much it might be worth. I also wanted to know how much you guys would give me for it. Like as a pawn, and then I pay it back. Okay, when I give you an appraisal, that's not how much I'm gonna give you in pawn. Okay. Hold on. The gentleman, minding his business, faces an unexpected twist as his lady swoops in, ready to reclaim her ring most dramatically. What are you doing? He wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. On my ring? Why'd you take my ring? Well, I wanted to see how much it was worth. Bull you're a liar. Why'd you take my ring? Ouch! Painful lesson learned, folks. Our big boy now knows the golden rule. Never pawn your wife's ring without her permission. Priceless wisdom, I must say. Sorry. Ooh. What? All of a sudden, boom, punches him. And I am dumbfounded. You're a idiot let's go right now. that's my tv a boyfriend pawned his girlfriend's tv and now she was on a mission to reclaim it looks like he learned the hard way that pawning is in relationship therapy uh, my boyfriend pawned my tv and i need it back i don't got no slip or nothing but i need my tv he took my tv i woke up this morning and it was gone and i need it back he didn't give you the ticket no you can look it up i can't help you without the ticket and if it's not in your don't do something and it's my because i need my Damn TV from out of here. Being mad and all that's one thing, pawn shop peeps. But our lady here forgot that this store had a no ticket, no service policy. So how about you keep your volume down, lady? So he stole it from you? Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do is go make a police report? No, I need my TV from here right now. Since it's uh -uh. not legal for us to look up no. somebody else's look name. No, look up my TV, lady. No, I will not. Don't, uh -uh, don't do that to me. Or what's gonna happen? Look, bring your ass out here and talk to me. Well, peeps, because we've got a show coming, our lady just summoned the pawn queen. 
and things are about to get interesting. Can I get my TV? I want my TV. Okay, you got two options. You can leave. I don't have no option. I, I ain't going nowhere. Bye. Get your big ass off me. I do what I want to do. Bye. Get your big ass off me. Have a good day. Pacifier Pawn. Seth, our pawn shop hero, encounters quite the character of a customer eager to part with both a TV and a ring. But wait, what's in her mouth? I'm Seth. How are you cute? Um, yeah. Mm. So how can I help you? I'm just bringing, you know, my TV and my ring. Trying to at least walk out with 800. Let me see your ring. That's right, lady. Our Seth here wasn't going to crack open with that pacifier or your flirting skills. How about we cut to the chase and look at the valuables? Her ring was pretty nice. It has diamonds. It's 10 karat gold. Her TV was relatively nice. Hey, you used to answer my question. I said what you want. I know. I said I'm good. So you need a loan or you want to sell it? Loan. Loan? About 300 bucks. You want to taste my ring? No. Or lick it? What did she just say? Well, even if the sun arises from the west, I ain't putting that in my mouth. How about we look for someone who might? Would you suck on my pacifier for 20 bucks? You can lick it, I know you want to. Yeah, you can. Ready? <laughs> Push fight. Two buddies square off at a pawn shop brawl over one friend's attempt to pawn the other's beloved PlayStation without permission. This calls for drama. That took my PS to pawn my Yo, my, my money back. Back. You know him? Yeah, that's my roommate. He tried to pull my in your shop, try to get some money off, but I want my yeah, He on me, my is mine. Hey, do me a favor, we're not gonna scream, okay? What's happening here? This ain't your hotel room, spoiled punks. You're just creating a ruckus. Y'all better watch that tone and listen to the pawn majesty. Angelo Steve, is that his? This between, yes or no? I mean, we're just trying to handle that, it ourselves. That's fine. Steve, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Is it Angelo's or yours? It used to be his. Okay. He owe me money. What am I supposed Steve? to do? It's my we pay bills. All my Come on, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I got to all my tell you what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, you probably want to take your business outside because there are some customers here who are not in a mood to listen to your story. Come take Can it. Can I see it? Come with me. You know, I'm a pawnbroker. I'm not a kindergarten teacher. You guys go talk about it amongst yourselves, and when you figure it out, then come back inside, okay? Until then, I don't want to hear your arguing. You grown men, not kids, go on. All right. Free grab. The girlfriend decided to pawn her boyfriend's Xbox, and now he's on a crusade to rescue it. Lesson learned, right? Pawning is such a brilliant way to solve everything. My girlfriend, she came up here and she got rid of my Xbox 360 and I came up here to get it back. Okay, here's a ticket. Um, no. I can tell you her name and you can just give me my I 360. I can't give you any information about somebody else's account. You okay. just need to give me my stuff. No. But our man here forgot that this store needs a police report for such incidents. So how about you keep your volume down, gamer? <laughs> Instead, this is what he does. Can I just have my we can sell you another one. Well, let me just look for one that I want to grab. Okay, you go that way. Wait, right hey, here. Six, there, and bro. I'll sell you one. Stop right here. No, ain't no And I'll selling. sell you one for $200. No, I can grab one for free. Excuse me? Yeah, you, you heard. You what? What in the world was this dude thinking? He was running around like it was a jogging park. But hold on to your seats. Big Joe was here for a run, too. Hey! Get out of here. Get the f out. Now. All right, I'll Don't up. ever step back my You gonna make me move? Get out of my face, I'm my store. Bye. <laughs> Customer flirting. Imagine you're ready to pawn that chain, right? How about using your charm to score a sweeter deal? Remember Ashley? She had a customer smitten with a better offer. You're the first person I met when I first come here to this pawn shop. Yesterday, I come up here and I got my chain out. Now I gotta pawn it again. Well, how much you have it in pawn for before? Oh, I had it on 120. I was yeah. gonna pawn it for 200. Do you wanna take a look at it? Yeah. Just wait, my friend. What's the plan here? You and Ashley? Do you like BFFs? Now, from where this unconditional love stems, suspicion might be knocking at your door. I can't find her name in the system. You sure can keep a woman waiting. Well, here's the thing. I don't even see you in my system. So you lied to me? I do like you. No, you lied. I adore you. I appreciate that. I would not that. lie to you. Whoa, that confession strategy is next level. But hey, reality is the ultimate plot twist, right? 
plans in our heads versus the real-time remix don't always sync up. How much did you get on this? I get the last time 120. Okay. I'll give you 130. Okay. All right, step on over. I think I've got a customer for life. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. 700 cockroaches. No shiny metal, no problem. Time for a quirky twist. Snag those cockroaches and hit the pawn spot down the alley. Who knew creepy crawlies could be the new currency? Hold the phone, folks. His eerie charm's catching on. They are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Oh, ew, 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 ew. Did you want to see one? No, 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 no! <laughs> Close it! Yeah, those gross goodies? He's got his sneaky secrets for that oddball offering. I was using them to feed my savanna monitors. That is disgusting. How many do you have? If you pick yeah, one of these up, they're actually heavy, because there's so many of them in there. I really do believe you. <laughs> Seriously, bro, we're talking a buck a pop. Those things are tough to sell, even as giveaways. It's like offering a lifetime supply of, well, nope. You better take them back home. I wish I had somebody that, that needed them. Thank you very much, I'm sorry. I bought living creatures in the past. Cockroaches isn't in our repertoire, but the best thing about it, the look on Ashley's face, priceless. That was gross. Chicken Man. All righty, folks, we've got the Rocket Man on our radar, but hold on to your feathers, because here comes the Chicken Man on a mystery hunt while eating chicken in the pawn shop. That's ironic. You hungry? No, I'm not. That. This, I got this for free. I work there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, do you? Yeah. Let me show you. Feel free to lay your chicken on the counter. All right, and look, this is what I do. I say I got chicken and fingers sucking. Come for a plucking. Looks like we've cracked the age-old riddle like the chicken across the road. Well, to get a pawn shop watch, of course. But hey, buddy, you're not pulling a poultry prank now, are you? He's eating chicken while he's talking to me. Yay, yay! Oh! All right, look, let me see right now. You're, you're spinning chicken on the counter. That's for you, man. Can I see that right now? Sure. You see it? How much does this cost? 1,200 bucks. Check out Mr. Chicken over here. He's likely on a goof-off mission. However, Seth seems to be pretty annoyed. Oh, here's how he neutralized the chicken threat. Are you seriously gonna buy something or are you just... You ain't even let me see Dude, now you're bothering me. In a second, Byron's about to choke a chicken. Oh, choke the chicken. He's about to. All right, look, look, look. Make a deal, deal. Byron, I stopped the chicken. chicken. Come chicken. on, man, let's go. And you know what? He ain't got to me. Angry mom. This mama's boy strolls into the store, peddling his speaker. Seth's deal? Not winning any gold stars. Looks like our dude here is stuck in a pickle. I got a speaker. I got you got multiple speakers. And we $150 short, so I'm hoping you guys can help us out. Realistically, I could sell you them for about 100 bucks. So what you trying to give me for this? I want 150. What you selling it or pawning it? Selling it. 45 bucks. Mr. Black, you're in for an offer based on your goods. Just a heads up, though. His chat game with Seth could ruffle more scratches than a ticklish itch. So I can get you 45 no, bucks. I don't need for these mother. They won't well, give me what you I came want. in. You want 150 no, bucks? Damn. What? Mama, you, just... you don't talk like that in front of these people. I done raised you better than that. Now you apologize. I'm, I'm taking just... my speaker. What? what? Oh yes, reach it, Mama. Time for a lesson or two. Junior needs a master class in manners. Let's dial up an apology for his bad language. I can't take you nowhere. It's the whole city without you. No, no. Boy, no. What do I pay you guys for? I'm hiring her. I can't take you nowhere. I hope this kid learned his lesson. Ryan, don't Get hit me in the car. car. Get in the car. Okay. Minute paint. Take a breath, people. We've got an artist in the house waving the pro flag and live painting. He's gonna whip up a masterpiece before the big boss, Les. Tell me about your clothes. Well, this is all happenstance from what I, from what I do. I'm an artist. I do these paintings, and um, well, I, I do them live. What does that mean? He paints a four foot by five foot painting in basically four and a half to 10 minutes. Whoa, talk about a high stakes showdown. This show's seen more tricks than a magician's hat. No crystal ball here. Let's buckle up and watch the masterpiece unfold. Go. We are at 2.20. Five minutes. Two minutes left. Oh my god, that skill's on fire. Our paintbrush skills are lost at best. But looky here, Mr. Pro's got his bag of tricks. 
Here's what Les has to offer. 100 bucks. If, if we can meet up to 500, I'll go a couple hundred bucks. Deal for 200. Deal. You got it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love it. I love it. Disrespecting Ashley. This man is on the hunt through the shop, spotting a bedcum table. He's got a plan for some store-wide spotlight drama. Look what he has to say. This is a sex table, baby, right? This actually... Get your ass over and shut up. Get off that bed. First no, time. I ain't getting no... Get off that bed. Get kicked in the face. Look, come this way, baby. Who do you think you sexy. are to talk to me like Girl, that? if he let me, I'll be slapping that ass. He's probably forgotten where he's standing. And you know how they show punks the exit. Well, Les ain't having any of it. He's diving in for some sense talk. Do you know what you're talking to, man? Back up, Back up, man. Back up, man. Really? You don't think so? Here's the way I'm gonna roll You don't disrespect my daughter and my jacket. Get the out of here. Les, we go back, You're disrespecting my daughter like that. Striking a nerve on a calm day. You go, Les. Someone needs a major attitude makeover. Time for a crash course in how not to be a jerk. You don't talk about my daughter. Who's she? Who's she? You understand that? You understand that? You understand that? I got you. Don't with my kid. I'm sorry, man. You don't with my kid. I'm sorry, Les. I'm sorry, man. Get this off property. What's going on out there? Do not go out there. Dirty couch. Fresh in a new city? The furniture hunts on. And guess where you score budget friendly items? Yep, the pawn shop. Have a look. We have used furniture, and we give deals. Our used furniture sometimes has things on it. Okay, why is it so, so freaking dirty, man? Because it's used. Yeah. That's why it's $397.77. Really? Well, I only got 200 bucks. What's the dilemma here, man? Buying a used sofa at a pawn store and expecting showroom shine? Your brain might not function properly to have such an expectation, sir. Let me try this out, man. I'll tell you what, my shoes are cleaner than this couch. Then don't buy it. Make me a deal. I got cash in my pocket, man. Wow, Come on, 200 man. bucks. Come on. Did you catch the words he just uttered? Mr. Couch is clueless about the league he's stepping into. Time for him to gear up because less is on the horizon. OK, it's time to go. Come on, man. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, come on, man. Here, come yeah, on. man. Come on. Right. Don't make my, come on, man. This is how we do it in the deep. Yeah. Walk out. Walk out, my man. Deal with the devil. Here's a spooky one. This might not be your regular Tuesday. Because this time, the devil isn't at the crossroads, but at the pawn shop trying to sell his gold for cash. How old are you? 2,500 years old. Great. I finally got to meet somebody that's older than my dad. <laughs> so how can I help you today? I want to get rid of this gold. I don't want gold. I want money. I think he's crazy. But interesting fact, people, this time around, you don't have to give your soul in return, but some cash and the devil's good to go. Here's what happened next. This guy might take the cake for the weirdest guy that has ever walked through the store. How much you want? Tell me what you give me. I could have gotten $650 for this stuff. Can't do it. This is 50. Les hasn't ever made a deal with the devil. But this time around, he's willing to crack this one, being ready to outwit even the Mark Trickster. You want 610? I'll take 650. I can't give it to you. I guess we don't have a deal. Ivory Tusk. All right, peeps, just welcome our queen of antiques who casually strolls into a pawn shop. Ah, well, she's here to pawn her ivory tusk. Now, isn't that a marvelous collectible? What a classic move, lady. I'm here today at the pawn shop with my ivory tusk that is beautifully hand-carved. I would hope that I could get somewhere between 1000 and 1500 for it. And what do you want to do with it? I want to pawn it for 7 to 10 days. Okay. I need some money between now and 4 o'clock. <laughs> mm, folks, the world was on the edge of its seats for some ivory enthusiasts. But guess what? Our lady's luck got lightning struck in front of an ivory expert. Unfortunately, it's not ivory. What do you mean it's not ivory? This is bone. It's pieced together bone, and it's made for the tourist trade. It only took like two seconds to tell this was an ivory. I've seen this hundreds of times before. They were in Asia. They went to a market. They were told they were ivory. Whoa, that's a shocking twist. Turns out that the precious treasure was just a bone-made knockoff. 
However, as far as our lady's reaction goes, let's just say reality hits like a ton of bricks. Thousand to fifteen. I would loan you like a hundred dollars on this. No. Okay, that's what I can do. Do a little bit better. There's no way I could do better. It's not real. It's bone. Okay. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, but I don't loan on pretty. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Flintlock pistol. Got your eye on some quick cash? How about you give up on your Wild West hero dream? Therefore, our Mr. Big Shot was weaving his impressive flintlock pistol, hoping for a gold rush fortune. There was a seller there who had uh, got it from a estate sale, and I was told that uh, at the estate sale it had been in the family for generations. So, you know, the seller had a lot of information about it. And if you look over here, they've got some of the markings that are indicative of something in that time period. So, here we go the infamous dialogue I've got a gun collection. However, Mr. Collector, your tail, that prized possession, and your overall aura just don't vibe with gory standards. The oldest one I've ever bought. It's got a lot of history to it. I think it's a really good gun. So why are you trying to get rid of it? Well, my wife is, uh, is kind of pushing me for it. I love this gun. It's like been the cream of my, uh, my collection, and you know it kills me to sell it. I, I don't want to sell it. So after Corey dialed in the experts, cue the drum roll, people. Turns out our know-it-all collector got served a plate full of surprising facts. <laughs> Who saw that coming, right? It looks the period, and it looks like it has age, but it's all artificial. So, so okay, so how much is this thing worth? Its value would be about $75 to $100. You know, I paid 800 bucks for this. I'm sorry you, you, you got burned. 1995 Atlanta. Buckle up, baseball buffs, and grab your baseball bats to swing for this news. A dude whips out a 1995 Atlanta Braves World Series ring, all set to cash in at the pawn shop. The first championship rings were given to the Giants in 1922 when they beat the Yankees. So it's no big surprise that these things can go for a lot of money. You know, there's a pretty big difference when it comes from staff to player rings. This belonged to Ted, and he issued it or gave it away. It can make it worth more. Look at that. A real gem for sports collectors, huh? Must take a genius to part with this historical treasure. But don't worry, we've got professionals to hold the pawnbroker's hands through it. Let's take a look at the ring here. We have a large diamond set on top of a blue stone, and we're going to have 18 smaller diamonds surrounding it. The company Jostens, they made the rings for the 95 Championship Braves. So on the inside, we should see the Jostens logo. Unfortunately, this isn't even a staff ring. Now it makes me feel like it. He's an aspiring con artist trying to outwit the pawnbrokers. And guess what? That ring's a salesman's knockoff. Shady vibes, right? With the original box and everything, you're looking at around two grand. I was really disappointed. They bring some off the street. I don't know where he came from. All of a sudden, he, he comes through the door, and he's Mr. Expert on baseball. So I don't know. I was really disappointed. Pez collection. Well, hold the presses, folks. Our genius Candyman is ready to part with his Pez dispenser gems. I can already hear the collector's stampeding. What a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. These are very, very collectible, and it's a great hobby. Seems like this is something the kids would be into collecting, man. Come on, man. Busts my balls all day long. I know it might look childish to you, but there's definitely money into it. Oh, everyone's just dying for candy. I mean, who needs a balanced diet when you can have a mountain of Pez dispensers? Anyway, here's a quick run-through of his collection. I have the Mickey Mouse in the original box. It's a die cut. This piece here goes for about $350, $400. One of my coolest pieces I like is the original Batman. Very tough to find. You know, this goes for about $250, $300. However, forget the joy of indulging in sugary treats. The true sweet victory is mastering the candy trade. Here was the candy man making the quote. Give me 2,000, man. 1,000 bucks is what I can do. It's fine. All right, buddy, get out of here, man. I can't believe one of them guys offered me $1,000 for that them 50 pieces of Pez. That's an to the Pez community. I can't believe it. Roman coin. Check out this coin geek with a Julius Caesar era relic, bringing seriously ancient bling to the table. History's calling, blingers. One of the neat things is, is where it says dictator on the front of it. Uh, that's a negative term nowadays. Back then, it wasn't. During times of war, they would assign a person the title dictator. Mm -hmm. And a dictator had to, would do what was necessary to preserve the republic. All right, Rick, pause the history lecture. Drop the knowledge bomb. What's the scoop on this ancient coin? Break it down, buddy. We're all ears. How much were you looking to get out of it? I want 4,400, please. 
there's there's a million variables, especially with ancient coins. And quite frankly, I don't know enough. I don't know if that's a good price or not. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? Sure, please. All right, I'll be right back. Thank you. So, oh, buckle up for the roller coaster. The expert's verdict drops and booms the dramatic seller reaction. Get your popcorn, folks. It's perfectly genuine. All right. The very best of these have brought in the neighborhood of $200,000 each. Okay. This is worth in a neighborhood of $1,500. Retail? Retail. Okay. Well, 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 our expert, the all-knowing oracle here. But hold your piggy banks, because our coin collector's not done raising concerns. Yeah, I, I'd give you a thousand bucks for the coin. Is this a real offer, or? That's, that's a legitimate offer, yeah. That's not a legitimate offer. You're just using your position here, trying to buy something for below its market value. I guess we're not going to make a deal, man. Okay. You're lost, my friend. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Have a nice one. Semi Mosley. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a real rock star here strutting in with a Semi Mosley guitar, thinking he's gonna hit the jackpot. <laughs> it smells like music in the air. When he was at a guitar convention in Europe, he met a Spanish luthier, and they had such a remarkable tone that Semi thought gospel musicians should have something that sings when they do the Lord's works. He did this prototype. Okay. He hand wound the pickups. Hold your applause, folks. Our guitar virtuoso has graced us with the rarest prototype ever made by Mosley. But hey, before we plug it in with the amp, let's have an expert take a look. This is the prototype gospel guitar. All right. In the guitar market of today, a realistic selling price on this instrument would probably be $25,000. And just like that, the situation escalates quicker than you can strum a chord. Don't know if that's worthy of music memorabilia, but here's how Mr. Safari's shirt reacted. That's absolutely ridiculous because it's been appraised over the years. Uh, back in the 90s, it was appraised at a minimum of $100,000, and that was in the 90s. I'm just saying from knowing what I've just recently sold myself, I don't think anybody's gonna step up that high for it. Lamborghini clock. Oh, guess who's in town? The almighty Clockmaster. Get her ready, everyone, because today's masterpiece is none other than a stunning Lamborghini dashboard clock up for grabs. These were uh, made by Briquet for Lamborghini in the introduction of the Diablo in 1990 through 1993. It was a big deal when it came out. It was the first Lamborghini to go over 200 miles an hour. Oh, look who's stepping into the ring. Chum Lee's thoughts on the masterpiece that the Clockmaster didn't exactly applaud. Time for a clash of opinions. Okay, I, I've had clocks like this before. They don't sell like the watches do. Uh, they depreciate just like the Lamborghini. <laughs> I don't think he's funny. Okay. Oh, Chum Lee, hold that thought. Your wisdom's not on the menu right now. Let Rick, the negotiation maestro, work his magic. How about 25? How about 22? 24. Um, I'll go 2300 bucks. Okay. All right. Deal. Write him up, Chum. Charles Briefcase. Sit down and buckle up for this one, peeps. Remember Charles Lindbergh, the solo aviator? Our man here claims to possess his briefcase, and he's looking for some big bucks. A couple had bought a home, and this was one of the items that they had found. When they opened it up, they seen where it had embossed the name Charles A. Lindbergh. Okay. Right here. C.A. Lindbergh, Little right. Falls, Minnesota. Oh, sure. Let's not make paper planes and just have our fancy briefcase professional take a look at it because that's the most important thing, right? One thing that I found as I was doing research on this was a letter that Charles August sent to his son where he talks about the fact that he is out of money and he has been selling his goods. Well, isn't it just lovely when experts think they know everything? Our Lindbergh enthusiast has a different perspective and believes that their opinion is just as valid. I mean, try and do some more research, try to get some more documentation. That's all I can tell you. All right, will that change your mind? Depends on what you get, okay? All right, thank you very much. Have a nice day, man. All right. This did not belong to his father, and I will prove that when I come back. It's gonna cost a whole lot more. Led Zeppelin. Prepare your stairway to rock heaven. Cue the legendary Led Zeppelin. Our rock star's got an album signed by the Fab Four members. 
because who needs stairs when you've got music magic? Hey, this is really amazing. Led Zeppelin is one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Every one of their albums was in the top 10, and six of their albums were number one. Now, four signatures on an album, if this is real, I probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. Hold up, rock enthusiasts. Let's not navigate this riff alone. Time to ring in the pros for some signature symphony guidance. Here's how that went. Based on everything I've seen, absolutely no doubt this is the real deal. Sweet. And what do you think it's worth? These things just really don't exist. But with that said, I put this value right at about ten to $12,000. Whoops, that just triggered a button. But hey, Rick's unfazed by our shenanigans and smoothly sails on with the negotiation journey. My best price uh, would be seventeen five. This is This is history. Yeah, I mean, I'd go 8,500, but... No, I, I'm sorry, you know, okay. I appreciate the offer. Golden State Warriors ring. Guess what? Cupid's been busy, and our Romeo's on the hunt for a championship ring to dazzle the lucky fiancé. Game on, love struck champ. So what I did was I brought pictures of another 75 Golden State Warriors ring. Okay. And as far as uh, the pictures are concerned, they, I mean, they, they match up. Yeah. It's perfect. Here's a Shakespearean plot twist. Romeo's seemingly out to give Rick a trigger. Come on, dude. You're facing a pawn shop titan. Let's see how this drama unfolds. It's not a testing. Uh, that's because you have a really cheap tester. Do you have one of your, your yeah, own? Yeah, I, uh, I have my own stuff over there. Yeah, I mean, if... Mr. Romeo came in, ready to take down the big G. But plot twist, the universe decides to serve him a slice of humble pie instead. Anyways, here's how things went on from that point. Any, any, uh... 11 grand, that's what 11, I can do. That's your bottom line? Yeah, okay. best price. Fair enough, I mean, I'm disappointed, but it's, you know, you're, it's your property, you own it, and uh, you gotta do what's in your best interest, All right. so. All right, no problem, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Halberts. Ah, behold the wannabe warrior, armed not with valor, but with a stash of classic weapons. Who needs battles when you can make quick money selling halberds? The modern quest. These axes are in amazing shape. If we can prove these are real, I know I can easily sell them to a military collector. So how much are you looking to get for these halberds? I need 7,500 each. 7,500 each, all right. Oh, perfect idea. Our financially savvy warrior needs an expert battle opinion on pricing halberds. Because, you know, conquering markets is totally like conquering kingdoms. The thing that really concerns me about this piece is that the steel is really flimsy. You know, you whack somebody wearing armor with this thing, it's liable to bend or break. I'll conclude that this is probably from the Victorian period and is what I call the decorator piece. Well, congrats on that masterclass. But hey, guess what? Corey's uncrushable optimism still has a glimmer of interest in our warrior's equipment. I mean, if I were to make you an offer, I'd make you an offer of around 1500 bucks. Are you talking a piece? <laughs> no, I'm talking total. No, I'm not interested at all. Well, if I were you, next time I'd buy one, I'd call Craig too. All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bye. What you got here? That's a watch my grandmother gave me. Uh-huh. Wow, this dude received a watch from his grandma, which is pretty sweet, right? But here's the thing. He's convinced it's solid gold and expects a fat stack of cash for it. Well, let's hook him up with the amount he's hoping for. Let's find out. 500. The problem is the metal on it is just stainless steel. Well, the metal on it is just stainless steel, so that's disappointing. But how will this guy take it? Yeah, you see these, this discoloration on the side? No. You don't see the rose? Whoa, hold up. This dude just flat out rejected it without even taking a peek. Talk about a major red flag, am I right? Less than explain. It was in between the links were gold plated. The gold plating had rubbed off. The watch had no value. And then this guy's like, can I get someone else to check it out then? Because Les shut down his hopes of getting any cash. Whoa, okay, Mr. Expert. This dude is seriously not happy about it. Value. It does have value. How about your chain? You want to pawn me your chain? Anyway, being the sweetheart that he is, Les brings in another dude for a second opinion just to be fair. But what happens next is totally mind-blowing and straight-up disrespectful. Brace yourself for this one. It's gonna shock you. Does this bozo know what he's doing? Well, I wouldn't really call him names. Seriously, this dude needs to chill and get a grip. I mean, who does he even think he is? Anyway, 
From that point on, things started spiraling down, and honestly, it's for all the right reasons. 500. Nothing. Stop being a bitch. Now, Les ain't about to tolerate any disrespect, and nobody should. And this jerk is about to experience a dose of his own medicine. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. Check out what Les has in store for him. Give me my mother man. Come over here and pick this bitch. Oh, man, this dude is about to get serious flipping off. I kid you not. You know what goes down with idiots like him? They're in for a rude awakening. Yo, you. Get him. Yeah. Let's go, my man. Have a good day, sir. Have a good day. Gotta admit, that was seriously hilarious. What did Les have to lose? Nothing at all. But this guy, oh yeah, he got exactly what he deserved. The man just couldn't stop with the curses. <laughs> Sir, let's stuff out. My let's stuff out. Oh, you think this was intense? Well, hold on tight because you haven't seen anything yet. So this dude walks in, right? And he brings in some equipment, no beating around the bush, and straight up expects a cool hundred bucks for it. And you believe that? Like, I'm trying to get at least a honey for it. $100? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it for that. Well, the guy just flat out tells him that there's no way he can cough up a hundred bucks. So the customer's disappointed. But hey, at least he's keeping his cool, right? So how much can you give me, man? 20 bucks? Well, we're clueless about what this dude's gonna pull off next. But hold up. Seth comes swooping in to handle the situation like a boss. Let's see how he tackles it. Getting on the back. Do you know what it is? It don't matter how many you sitting on sure, in the back. because then I can't... Well, things are seriously heating up, and it's turning into a real mess. Seth tries to talk some sense into the guy, but he's just not cooperating. And instead, he's shouting like there's no tomorrow. Dollars for this. You paid 200 for that, I ever heard? Yeah, I mean... Really, I you paid 200 So Seth breaks it down for him, saying it's not even worth 100 bucks. But this dude is now causing a scene, making a big fuss that's grabbing everyone's attention, to be honest. What about? I'm trying to get money for it. I've been waiting in this line for hours. I need more than two. This guy seriously needs to calm down. He's dropping way too many curse words. And honestly, it's going to be his one-way ticket out of the shop. That's when Les steps in to take charge. Let's see how that plays out. You gonna do old man? Who are you calling old mother? Old man. No way. He actually said that? Like, seriously, what the heck? This guy just keeps digging his own grave making the situation even worse for himself. Brace yourself, because what he does next is going to leave you absolutely stunned. Oh, no. Really, mother I got this. I got it. You want to give me more than Oh, my God. Seriously? Can you believe it? This dude actually tried to mess with Les and thought he could get away with it without being kicked out. That's some messed up behavior right there. Like, what on earth was he even thinking? I wait for an hour. Really? F me? F you. Well, he totally got what he deserved. But guess what? That's not even the end of it. Brace yourself for this next one. So this lady strolls into the store wanting to treat herself to a fancy watch. She's all sweet and ready to drop some cash. What could possibly go haywire, right? Now, this lady is seriously contemplating whether she should go for it or not. So what's your take on it, guys? You think she'll end up taking it or not? Hold up. Is that for real? She whips out a gift card with all this confidence, and hey, is that some kind of new payment method now? Ashley looks totally baffled by this turn of events. Not a gift card. What would you call it? Is These that are preferred customers. Right. Man, this lady is already super worked up the moment Ashley spills the beans that it's not a gift card, and she goes on to explain the situation. Talk about major agitation right off the bat. He loves you. Discounts on the sales floor. You can't swipe this card and apply. This lady is seriously cut off guard and maybe just can't handle the fact that it's not a gift card. And this customer is completely unreasonable, dude. But hey, props to Ashley for still trying to explain things calmly and patiently. Hey, what, what, where do you see a swipe thing on this? Do you see a swipe? Someone needs to rein in this woman because the way she's throwing a fit over a gift card is seriously ridiculous. I mean, does she not even realize how foolish she looks? Just look at her, still going on and making an absolute spectacle of herself. Somebody want to buy a preferred gift card? There's no. not a hurry. And last but not least, we get this other dude who goes absolutely bonkers. But here's the kicker. It's not about something he wants to buy or pawn. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth set him off then? Well, keep watching to find out. Hey, how you doing? I'm here to buy an engagement ring. So No kidding, this guy is actually here to buy an engagement ring. Whoa, that's some exciting news, isn't it? Les coolly presents a selection of engagement rings, and you'd think everything would go smoothly, right? Well, except for the blaring car horns outside, because of course, nothing can be too easy. Oh, 
damn. So that's the reason for all the honking? There's a massive truck just sitting smack in the middle of the parking lot. Now, take a wild guess. Whose truck do you think that might be? Come on, give it a shot. It's not rocket science. Semi truck. And then it's white gold. That's me. Sir, can you ding, ding, ding. It's none other than this guy. So Les politely requests him to move his truck from there. And what do you think his response was? Find your place to park. Oh, man, come on now. I got, I'm got. i in a hurry. I can't be moving yep. my truck in this. Yikes. Did he seriously say that? I mean, how do some people not have basic common sense? Did he genuinely think he was doing the right thing? Les is clearly not putting up with it, and you can totally see that. You don't have an option. You have to move your truck. I'll be more than happy to show you. Can you believe this guy had the nerve to straight up say no? Well, let me tell you, things are about to take a turn for the worse for him. But just when he thought he couldn't dig himself any deeper, he goes ahead and proves you wrong. Why are you so rude? I'm not moving the damn truck. Byron, take over. Well, obviously he's about to get kicked out, and trust me, you gotta watch this. It's absolutely hilarious. Move the truck. Come on, man. That, that's wrong, bro. Next time, parking on the freeway. This dude should be totally embarrassed about his behavior. And oh boy, he didn't stop there. He just kept on going. And the last straw was this. Move your truck! Well, that's all the craziness you get to see today, guys. It started when this old man walked into the Pawn Stars shop, carrying a semi-Mosley guitar, along with all the proper documentation. Little did he know what he was about to get himself into. And who do we have on the other side of the counter? None other than Rick Harrison himself, the proud owner of this legendary establishment. Let's see how this unfolds. Cool. I know a little bit about him. I know that he started off repairing guitars and then actually started making guitars. Rick wasted no time, man. He was all like, yo, spill the beans about that famous guitar. And the old man, who seemed to know everything about this valuable guitar, started sharing all the juicy deets. He had some seriously high expectations for the guitar, thinking it would rake in a crazy amount of cash. But hold up, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Rick ain't one to take risks when it comes to buying stuff, you know. So he decides to bring in an expert to make sure he ain't getting played. Smart move, Rick. It's always a good idea to get a second opinion, especially when there's big money involved. And bam, here comes the expert himself, a dude who knows guitars like nobody's business. He's about to drop some serious knowledge on this situation. The expert took a look at the hype about Semi Mosley guitar, which the old man thinks it's worth a fortune. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Keep an eye out for those moments when the old man's high hopes are about to go down the drain. After a thorough examination, the expert was ready to deliver his verdict. It would probably be $25,000. Well, the guitar was in great shape, no doubt about it. But no way the market value hovers around $25,000. And just like that, the old man's hope went to waste. But the old man thought the expert was kidding, and he didn't take his opinion seriously. After the expert opinion, it was time for the final moment. And here comes the classic pawn shop thing. So we're not going to make a deal, so all I can tell you is good luck. Thanks. And oh, did I see it right. This thing ended even without a start. Well, I'm glad it saved some misery for Rick. Knowing that the guitar was worth way more than just $25,000, he left. And just like that, the deal hit a brick wall. The old man's unrealistic expectations collided head on with the reality of the market. But next, we have a total moron who shows up at the Pawn Stars shop. The old man who thought he hit the jackpot, but in the end, reality bit him in the you know where. So, this another wild encounter is with our favorite goofball, Chum Lee. The episode starts with Chum Lee going to meet Buck the owner of an antique pirate ship. Buck's got this badass pirate boat, and it can hit speeds of up to 60 miles per hour on land. Now that's some crazy shit, my dudes. Chum Lee's eyes lit up like fireworks when he saw this epic pirate ship. You got a boat. It is a boat. Does it float? No. It you can tell he's itching to make a deal, but he knows he can't go rogue without Rick's permission. Well, the first thing he did was to send Rick a picture of this crazy giant. While waiting for Rick's reply, Chum Lee decides to go have a little fun on the ship. Woo! I'm on a boat! Sup, ladies? And it's quite evident that he's having a great time strutting around like Captain Chum, living his best pirate life. Now buckle up, because things just got real, real quick. The fun times, yeah, they're over. Now, we're diving into the spicy stuff, my peeps. We've reached the classic pawn shop negotiation phase, and let me tell you, it's about to get intense. Chum knew he had to haggle, 
But Buck, man, that guy is stubborn as a mule. Buck straight up dropped the bomb, saying he won't sell his ship for anything less than a mind-boggling $190,000. And let me tell you, Chum Lee's face went from pure excitement to straight up panic in a blink of an eye. Now, some might argue that it's a fair price, right? Like, this baby is worth every single penny, Chum. 190 k and she's all yours. But can Chum swing that kind of dough? Nah, man. Chum Lee's in way over his head, and he knows he can't afford that kind of cash. It's a total bummer, dude. This deal is going down the drain faster than a sinking ship. But hold up. Buck ain't giving up that easily. He wants to speak with Rick, and honestly, that's pretty fair considering the time he invested in showing Chum around the ship. And yep, you saw it right. Rick sent a text, but guess what? It ain't the reply we were hoping for, my friends. Rick shut down the whole idea before it even set sail. Chumley's dream of becoming a pirate captain just came crashing down like a freaking cannonball. It's a gut-wrenching scene, my friends. The disappointment is real. Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. Buck is fuming like a volcano about to erupt. It's clear he's not happy with the outcome. Ships ahoy, disappointment. Another prime example of Chumley's misadventures. The pirate ship's dream sank faster than a cannonball in the water. Brace yourselves for a dramatic tale involving a limited edition bronze statue. Let's dive right in. So it all starts with a man named Raphael, walking into the Pawn Star shop with this fancy limited edition 1888 bronze statue by Louis Bacall, a renowned French sculptor. After looking at the statue and knowing the potential value of this piece, Rick started salivating like a hungry wolf. Moving further, Rick's expert eyes started analyzing every little detail, hoping to strike gold and make some serious cash. And as Rick is examining the statue, you can see the excitement building up. If it turns out to be the real deal, it could be worth thousands of dollars. The suspense is killing. Come on, man, show me those original markings. Now, Rick's like a detective on the case, searching for any signs of authenticity. And in a dramatic twist, Rick got the truth. You need to see this. What's right? What doesn't look right is there's some pity right here. And that crack right there is from when they casted it. It didn't happen later. The statue has been recast. Oh, the disappointment is real, my friends. Well, ain't that a kick in the teeth? This statue is nothing but a fancy replica. 1888. The original was made in 1888. I don't believe you. Okay, I mean, I Raphael's hopes went up in smoke, and the idiotic mistake is laid bare. Hear what you say. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of you know. Looking at Raphael, it's sure he's clear that he's not taking the news well. He's about to unleash his frustration on Rick, and things are about to get heated. And what did we see? Looking at the heated argument, Rick's bodyguard was just about to get in the scene, but Rick stopped him. Just when tensions were about to boil over, Richard stepped in to play the peacemaker. He's not one to let things escalate, especially when it comes to business. And I 100% agree with what Richard just said. You might be wrong. We don't know. We're in the business to make money. But when we don't feel comfortable with something, we're going to back off. He's a smart guy indeed. It's true that they are here to make some dough, but with that, they also got to be smart about it. If something doesn't feel right, got to back off. No hard feelings, Raphael. Do you agree that a business is about making money and sometimes we got to be cautious? Can't blame us for not wanting to get burned. Look, Richard's wisdom prevails, reminding everyone that it's all about the money, but also about maintaining integrity. All right, all right, let's take a chill pill, guys. And there you have it, another crazy encounter on Pawn Stars. Raphael thought he hit the jackpot, but in the end, it was a painful lesson in authenticity. The Pawn Stars team reflects on another day filled with unexpected encounters and quirky characters. Rick, ever the shrewd businessman, knows that every deal won't be a success, but he remains optimistic for the next opportunity that walks through his shop's doors. The customers may have acted like real idiots, overestimating the value of their valuables, but it's all part of the pawn shop's charm. We can't wait to share this hilarious encounter with you guys. Trust me, it's gonna be a riot. It's a reminder that in the crazy world of pawn shops, you never know what surprises are waiting around the corner. It's like a never-ending treasure hunt, and we're loving every minute of it. So, until our next adventure, keep your eyes peeled for those hidden treasures out there. Whether you're with us at the pawn shop or exploring elsewhere, you never know what gems you might stumble upon. Stay tuned for more craziness from the Pawn Stars team.
Catch you on the flip side, treasure hunters. Thanks for joining us, my fellow treasure hunters. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more jaw-dropping moments, and remember to push that bell icon. See you in the next one. Good day, sir. Have a good day, my man. Yes, sir. Oh, mother. Oh, man. Who the f you calling him? Really? You the ugliest two sisters I've ever seen in my life. Check out the wildest, most intense moments on Hardcore Pond, where customers and staff bring the heat. And also get ready for some serious craziness at the pawn shop. Just another day at the pawn shop where we've got a mix of decent customers and, well, some pretty pathetic ones. Take this guy, for example. He may seem all laid back, but is he really? <laughs> what you got here? A watch my grandmother gave me. Uh-huh. Wow, this dude received a watch from his grandma, which is pretty sweet, right? But here's the thing. He's convinced it's solid gold and expects a fat stack of cash for it. Well, let's hook him up with the amount he's hoping for. Let's find out. 500. The problem is the metal on it is just stainless steel. Well, the metal on it is just stainless steel, so that's disappointing. But how will this guy take it? Yeah, you see these, this discoloration on the side? No. You don't see the rose? Whoa, hold up. This dude just flat out rejected it without even taking a peek. Talk about a major red flag, am I right? Less than explain. In between the links were gold plated. The gold plating had rubbed off. The watch had no value. And then this guy's like, can I get someone else to check it out then? Because Les shut down his hopes of getting any cash. Whoa, okay, Mr. Expert. This dude is seriously not happy about it. Value. It does have value. How about your chain? You want to palm me your chain? Anyway, being the sweetheart that he is, Les brings in another dude for a second opinion, just to be fair. But what happens next is totally mind-blowing and straight-up disrespectful. Brace yourself for this one. It's going to shock you. Does this bozo know what he's doing? Well, I wouldn't really call him names. Seriously, this dude needs to chill and get a grip. I mean, who does he even think he is? Anyway, from that point on, things started spiraling down, and honestly, it's for all the right reasons. 500. Nothing. Stop being a bitch. Now, let's say ain't about to tolerate any disrespect, and nobody should. And this jerk is about to experience a dose of his own medicine. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. Check out what Les has in store for him. Give me my mother man. Come over here and pick this bitch. Oh, man, this dude is about to get serious flipping off. I kid you not. You know what goes down with idiots like him? They're in for a rude awakening. Yo, you. Get him here. Let's go, my man. Have a good day, sir. Have a good Gotta admit, that was seriously hilarious. What did Les have to lose? Nothing at all. But this guy, oh, yeah, he got exactly what he deserved. The man just couldn't stop with the curses. <laughs> yes, sir, let yourself out. Come on, let yourself out. Oh, you think this was intense? Well, hold on tight because you haven't seen anything yet. So this dude walks in, right? And he brings in some equipment, no beating around the bush, and straight up expects a cool hundred bucks for it. Can you believe that? Like, I'm trying to get at least a honey for it. A hundred thousand? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it. Well, the guy just flat out tells him that there's no way he can cough up a hundred bucks. So the customer's disappointed, but hey, at least he's keeping his cool, right? So how much can you give me, man? 20 bucks? Well, we're clueless about what this dude's gonna pull off next. But hold up. Seth comes swooping in to handle the situation like a boss. Let's see how he tackles it. Putting on the back, do you know what it is? It don't matter how many you sitting on sure, in the back. Because then I can't well, things are seriously heating up, and it's turning into a real mess. Seth tries to talk some sense into the guy, but he's just not cooperating. And instead, he's shouting like there's no tomorrow. Dollars for this. You paid 200 for that, I ever heard? Yeah, I mean, really, I you paid 200. So Seth breaks it down for him, saying it's not even worth 100 bucks. But this dude is now causing a scene, making a big fuss that's grabbing everyone's attention, to be honest. I'm, about, I'm trying to get money for it. I've been waiting in this line for an hour. I need more than two. This guy seriously needs to calm down. He's dropping way too many curse words. And honestly, it's going to be his one-way ticket out of the shop. That's when Les steps in to take charge. Let's see how that plays out. You're going to do old man. Who are you calling old mother? Old man. No way, he actually said that? Like seriously, what the heck? This guy just keeps digging his own grave, making the situation even worse for himself. Brace yourself, because what he does next is going to leave you absolutely stunned. Oh, no. Really, mother I got this. I got it. You want to give me more than Oh my god, seriously? Can you believe it? This dude actually tried to mess with Les and thought he could get away with it without being kicked out. 
That's some messed up behavior right there. Like, what on earth was he even thinking? Hey, wait for an hour. Really? F me? F you. Well, he totally got what he deserved. But guess what? That's not even the end of it. Brace yourself for this next one. So, this lady strolls into the store wanting to treat herself to a fancy watch. She's all sweet and ready to drop some cash. What could possibly go haywire, right? This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. Now, this lady is seriously contemplating whether she should go for it or not. So, what's your take on it, guys? You think she'll end up taking it or not? That's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. good on you. It was 100. 100. Okay. She went for it. Well, everything's going pretty darn smooth so far. I don't want to jinx it, though, so let's just wait and see what unfolds next. Here. No. What is this? It's a $100 gift card. $100 gift card? Hold up. Is that for real? She whips out a gift card with all this confidence, and hey, is that some kind of new payment method now? Ashley looks totally baffled by this turn of events. Not a gift card. What would you call it? Is These that are for customers. Right. Man, this lady is already super worked up the moment Ashley spills the beans that it's not a gift card, and she goes on to explain the situation. Talk about major agitation right off the bat. He loves you. Discounts on the sales floor. You can't swipe this card and apply. This lady is seriously cut off guard and maybe just can't handle the fact that it's not a gift card. And well, she's getting a bit too aggressive, folks. You know, the kind that usually gets shown the door and tossed out of the shop. Turn around and swipe it, okay? There's no swiper on this. So you telling me I'm losing? I gotta say, this lady is giving me some major secondhand embarrassment. I mean, it's crystal clear that the card cannot be swiped. Like, come on, that's basic common sense. But no, this woman just kept on making a complete fool out of herself. I don't understand up in here, okay? Because you I'm not about swipe. to lose, Hold on one right? second, let me explain this I'm to Man, the way this woman is yelling, it won't be long before she gets the boot from the pawn shop. This customer is completely unreasonable, dude. But hey, props to Ashley for still trying to explain things calmly and patiently. Hey, what, where do you see a swipe thing on this? Do you see a swipe? Someone needs to rein in this woman because the way she's throwing a fit over a gift card is seriously ridiculous. I mean, does she not even realize how foolish she looks? Just look at her, still going on and making an absolute spectacle of herself. Somebody want to buy a preferred gift card? There's no not a on it. There's not Man, people can really lose it sometimes. It's wild. And last but not least, we get this other dude who goes absolutely bonkers. But here's the kicker. It's not about something he wants to buy or pawn. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth set him off then? Well, keep watching to find out. Hey, how you doing? I'm here to buy an engagement ring. So No kidding, this guy is actually here to buy an engagement ring. Whoa, that's some exciting news, isn't it? Les coolly presents a selection of engagement rings, and you'd think everything would go smoothly, right? Well, except for the blaring car horns outside, because of course, nothing can be too easy. Oh, damn! So that's the reason for all the honking? There's a massive truck just sitting smack in the middle of the parking lot. Now, take a wild guess. Whose truck do you think that might be? Come on, give it a shot. It's not rocket science. Semi truck. And then it's white gold. Oh, that's me. Sir, can you ding, ding, ding. It's none other than this guy. So Les politely requests him to move his truck from there. And what do you think his response was? Find a good place to park? Oh, man, come on now. I got, I'm in a hurry. I can't be moving yep. my truck in this. Yikes. Did he seriously say that? I mean, how do some people not have basic common sense? Did he genuinely think he was doing the right thing? Les is clearly not putting up with it, and you could totally see that. You don't have an option. You have to move your truck. I'll be more than happy to show you. Can you believe this guy had the nerve to straight up say no? Well, let me tell you, things are about to take a turn for the worse for him. But just when he thought he couldn't dig himself any deeper, he goes ahead and proves you wrong. Why are you so rude? I'm not moving the damn truck. Byron, take over. Well, obviously he's about to get kicked out, and trust me, you gotta watch this. It's absolutely hilarious. Come on, truck. Come on man, that, that's wrong, bro. Next time parking on the freeway. This dude should be totally embarrassed about his behavior. And oh boy, he didn't stop there. He just kept on going. And the last straw was this. Move your truck! Silver Surfer. Oh, guess what? We've got a bona fide comic enthusiast here. Big surprise. Like, who isn't, right? Well, this guy's taking his passion to a whole new level. 
feast your eyes on what he brings in. That's the Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer. Life size. Tell me about it. Well, this was a display for the Fantastic Four Rise of the Surfer movie. Uh, they made 1,500 of these, and plywood board, it is wrapped in a vac metal plastic wrap. Oh, what a shocker. It's a collector's item. But hold up emotions, people, because it's got a price tag. I'm not sure if the experts are going to agree. Well, online, these things go for $3,000. Actually, Silver Surfer was voted in the top 50 recognizable comic book heroes in America. I mean, I really went 2000 for it. I am willing to buy this from you for 500 Hey, genius. If you're after that dream price, maybe hit up a comic store. Selling your treasure trove at a pawn shop? Yeah, real brainiac move here, buddy. 900 900 bucks. That's it. I think I'm gonna have to walk. All right, well, it was a pleasure. We're gonna go surfing on home. See you later. Custom-made electric chair. Folks, take a puff. We've witnessed all sorts of weirdness at the pawn shop, but this fella's cranked it up a notch. Check out his wild sell list. So tell us a little bit about him. We have Halloween retail stores. This is a custom-made electric chair. There's a whole show if you guys want to see it. Sure, sure. go ahead. Watch show. Us. Hell yeah! I'm really into this kind of thing. This might be the new feature at my house on Halloween. Oh, just what we all need. A bedside toy that screams Halloween 24-7. No biggie, except it's art, not like living in a slasher fic or anything. Uh, so we're looking to get about $8,000. Brand new, they're just above nine. And that cool. makes a lot of sense. Right. Buy a used one that's six years old. Well, the for cool thing about this one is that they don't make them like this anymore. You're There's right, they many. don't. The new ones are digital. Well, guys, Mr. Ambitious over here is dead set on this mystery item. Heaven knows what his grand plan is, but Les has a style for a bargain. Thank you very much for bringing Thank it you. in. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, my bad. Damn it. I'm a little disappointed that I gotta schlep it back home, but you know, with Michigan being, you know, like the number one state for haunted houses and attractions and things like that. Elephant skull haggle. Oh, guess what? No fancy sofa, no blingy ring, and no one of a kind car to pedal? No worries. How about you trade an elephant skull for some greens? Because that's normal, right? The skull of an elephant. Really? Very unusual. It's very unusual. My best friend had it, passed away, and I inherited this one. It's where the tusks were. I understand that. It came from Africa? Yeah, right. Well, so. I can promise you nobody has ever brought in an elephant skull, yeah. ever. That I can Little tell unique. You. Ever wondered where one finds a thing like that? Well, surprise, surprise, there's a thriving market for massive elephant skulls. Yeah, you heard it right. Skull heads. A thousand. That's as low as I'm going to go. Let me talk to my elephant expert. Africans are buy it now for 2300 and the Asians are 1900 The good part was, it's worth the money. There is a demand for elephant skulls, but I'll be damned if I'm giving it away. Okay, peeps. When Les locks onto something, prepare for a solar eclipse, because he's not releasing his grip. Anyway, there's a plot twist in this pawn shop drama. I got $700, $100 bills waiting for me. $750. $700. And if you think it's worth $50 for you to schlep it home, it is. Schlep it. It is. Schlep it. I'll give it to you for seven. <laughs> you got a deal. Thank you very much. Thank Come you. right thank over you. here. We'll thank take you. care All of right. it. All right. All yeah. right. Mark, thank you. Bone rattler. Okay, people. The granddaddy of speed in the house. Ready to snatch up a drag racing car from the pawn shop? Who knew shuffleboard was just a warm up? This guy is an expert. He knows all about drag racers. So does Jeff. Jeff is my jeweler, but he's much more knowledgeable with engines than I am. The guy that sold it to me said it cost him 85000 to put it together. Probably clipping along at about 250 miles an hour. Fire this puppy up. I don't know how to start it. Gather around, youngsters. We got a drag racing sage here, boasting a mere 30 years under his belt. So the wisdom dump is here, as he schools the pawn shop owner. You know how to start him? Sure. I knew you did. How long have you been racing dragsters? For about uh, 30 <laughs> years. Oh. You ready for this? I'm ready when you are. All right, Mr. Been There, Done That. Let's see if your drag racing tails can seal this deal or take a nosedive. Now, coming straight to the negotiation. 20 grand. 7,500? I don't think so. If you give me the money today, 15,000. I'll throw this gallons in for free. We have a deal for 15000 I guess so. Thank you very much. Have a Enjoy good day. your new car. Mechanical bull. Ah, the good old days of Wild West bull riding and rugged cowboys. Some dude missed the memo that it's not exactly the trendiest scene nowadays. 
Time to catch up, y'all. Going for a ride in my parking lot, or what are we doing? Let's have a little fun, girl. We're trying to sell our mechanical bowl. Why do you have it? A Western themed restaurant, bar, before, and uh, that was the theme. We put it, the bowl in the end of the bar. Well, slap on those cowboy hats. We got ourselves a scene here. But seriously, who's taking bets on whether they can wrangle a decent price for that rodeo-style bull riding? Well, let's say you were to buy these brand new. How much do they cost? They cost around fifteen to 20000 How much do you want? 15000 So if I was to buy this brand new or buy this used from you, it's the same price. Rental companies rent these out for seven fifty a day. There's a lot of revenue potential. Ah, man, sad to see these alpha men taking back their bull home. But folks, hold on to your hats. Maybe Ashley has something else in her mind. 3,000 right now. 45. 31. 39, you pack it up. That's my bottom dollar. 34. I can't do it. Sorry, good luck. Dr. Death's van. Step right up, viewers. You've heard of Dr. Death, but today's highlight is the van that spotlights as the ride for assisted suicides. Because nothing says vacation like a one-way ticket, right? This is a 1968 Volkswagen okay. van owned by Dr. Death, Jack Kaborkian. By Dr. Death. This is the actual van that he did his first and several other assisted suicides in. Jack Kevorkian was an iconic figure in the city of Detroit. We're not aiming for a Valley of Chrome farewell tour this time. Mr. Big Bucks here wants a six-figure sum. Brace yourselves, because Les has his few concerns all queued up. It is a piece of history. Um, I like buying weird you won't find another one. The problem is, it doesn't make sense to spend six figures on something like this for me. Well, you either love it or hate it. Like, I, I love it. This is definitely a piece of Detroit. A van oozing that delightful combo of creepiness and death vibes. So legit. However, why not throw in another expert opinion? Let's see how that went. So 10,000 ain't gonna buy it. No, I'm really, I'm in the six figure range. 20 grand? No. 25 grand. 30 grand. 50 grand? 30. One time, 50. 30. 30 cash right now. Bizarre bikini. Check out this granny of the century who strolls into the pawn shop with an elderly figure that has a lot to do with, uh, I don't know. You have a look and maybe you decide. What Which is the doll? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I'm dressing her. <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? A really nasty looking woman, but a very cool item. Yep, that's about accurate. You just saw a long-legged granny in a bikini. All the efforts are done in the name of art. However, our granny here invested in this model. How much did you want for this thing? I'd like to get $500 for it. This thing is art. It's a very cool item, but not for that price. I mean, she's really cute. I mean, she's really fun to look at, but it's not gonna be even close to 500 bucks. Never mind, that was gonna be a deal breaker. Unless Les had some more quotes to add to the art piece, this stirs things up for the selling mix. Here this woman was playing my game, and I was losing. 200. 190, I'll take it. Will, will he stop? Okay, schlep it home. You know, I heard my dad saying it wasn't worth the extra $10. Bull she wants 200. Latex vacuum bed. Look who's spicing up the pawn shop scene. This dynamic duo's got a latex vacuum fetish bed up for grabs. You know, just your average afternoon errand. Latex vacuum bed. A what? A latex, a latex vacuum, vacuum bed. bed. So you have sex with latex? Pretty much. Uh, it's like the autoerotic asphyxiation. Pretty it is, much, right? yeah. Bobby J surprisingly knew exactly what this thing was. All right, I was wondering, who needs candlelit dinners when you can have vacuum sealed intimacy? I'm not here to judge. However, here's a quick demonstration. So normally when Felix has his hand over his mouth, <laughs> normally what they like. I actually used it. Are you breathing? Here we go. Not gonna work. It's working. Everyone's a critic when it comes to, oh, what's the word? Uh, innovative sleeping arrangements. Yeah, there we go. And we aren't sure if that ever went up for the big sale. Used it. So how could you not want to do this with him? 
guess I don't want to suffocate. Um, it's not for everybody. I'm familiar with the bed. Very much so. Just imagine having sex in there. You don't have to hold you. Perfect. Well, now we got that out of the way. Just a normal fine day when this guy walks into the pawn shop to sell Les Paul's document collection, including an incredibly unique and world's one-of-a-kind Les Paul SG guitar that belonged to his Aunt Mary. And guess what? She wasn't just some guitar lover or a casual Les Paul fan. Hey, Aunt Mary just a guitar fan or? No, Les Paul's wife. This belonged to Mary Ford? Mary Ford. Yes, you heard him right. She was actually Mary Ford, the wife of the legendary Les Paul himself. Pretty surprising, right? Les Paul is practically a legend in the music world. He's known for creating the log, which was one of the earliest electric guitars, and he held patents for various innovations in pickups, amplifiers, and pretty much everything related to electric guitars. In the 1950s, Les Paul and Mary Ford topped the charts with over a dozen number one hits and sold millions upon millions of records. The documents included in the collection consist of correspondence between Les Paul and his manager, as well as his signed contracts. No doubt the pawn shop literally hit the jackpot with this collection. You might be wondering why someone would sell such a rare item. Unfortunately, it's because Mary's nephew had some debts to pay off. So the seller is hoping to get a quarter million dollars for this collection. The big question is, is it really worth that much? And is it still in good enough condition to fetch a high price? Let's find out. Rick Harrison calls for Drew, the expert from Authentic Autographs Unlimited, who specializes in forensic document examination. He then carefully examines the signature on the guitar and remarks that Les Paul had a unique and straightforward signature style. Interestingly, Drew notes that he never included his last name when signing autographs. He goes on to say, All right, well, you got a fantastic collection here. I don't see any evidence really of a secretarial. Uh, the consistency of the first name is uh, right where we want it to be. Afterward, Rick contacts Jesse, the proprietor of Cowtown Guitars, just with one look at the guitar and Jesse's jaw dropped to the floor. You know what it's worth? Wow. Dude, this is amazing. I, I can't even believe I'm holding this in my hands. Mary Ford's Les Paul. This is absolutely crazy. And the most exciting part is that this old damn guitar works. Nah, scratch that. It freaking rocks. <laughs> All right, so it works? Yeah, yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> okay. He further adds that the instrument carries a rich history and is worth a freaking fortune, like a cool six figures. But the exact value? Well, Jesse finally figured that out. Probably 150. I don't see why you could not get that with the documents, the history. Then Rick asked the seller, how much is he expecting from it? So he was like, I want 250,000 for it. But Rick was like, nah, man, there ain't many buyers out there. They haggled and ended up settling on $90,000. It might seem like a huge profit made by the seller, and Rick, on the other hand, had to shell out a crazy amount of cash for that guitar. And can you believe it was his first time dropping the much dough on a guitar? Insane, right? But someone in the comments section went all out and said that those papers would fetch a whopping 190 grand if Joe Bonamassa got his hands on them. Another user totally agreed with him and even said that if this guitar showed up in the right magazine, some millionaire rock star would easily drop at least 200,000 for it. But here's the main part. Did the pawn shop actually make any profit? Hell yeah, they did. Once the show aired, they wasted no time and threw that bad boy up on eBay. And guess what? They scored a whopping $110,000 for it. They ended up making a cool $20,000 profit, guys. Now that's what I call a successful hustle. Next up, we have a customer who came in trying to sell a sword that was supposedly forged by the famous Yasutsugu family, known for making weapons for badass samurais back in the day. But here's the twist. The seller looked familiar to Corey. It turned out that he had been there before to sell a trophy. You'll be thinking what kind of trophy it must be. Maybe some ancient artifact or something, right? But no, it was actually a Grammy Award. <laughs> yes, all in excitement, Rick bought it. But later he found out that it was not allowed to be sold. Oops, I can see a great loss there. Because of that now, they had to be extra careful before dealing with this sword. They weren't sure if it was a legit samurai sword or just some ninja knockoff. The seller is a lawyer and claimed he had received the sword as payment for his legal work. Pretty cool, huh? 
Some users are even cracking jokes about why the guy was so willing to sell such a masterpiece. One such comment was he must have been scared of his wife's anger, whose eyes are always fixated on that sword. And if she ever gets her hands on it, she's ready to knock him off. <laughs> Talk about a dangerous situation. Another user said he got robbed? Hmm, well, we have to wait to see the actual plot. Taking the lawyer's word for it, Corey decided to take the risk, and then he went ahead with the purchase. Even without having an expert to check its authenticity, I mean, let's be real, that was pretty foolish, right? I mean, who was going to check if the thing was actually legit or not? So they asked the seller how much he wanted for it, and he said $5,000. The buyers were skeptical about its condition and started throwing offers as low as 800 bucks. That's a crazy drop. But the seller fought back, saying every bit of that sword is worth the full $5,000. If you're going to hold my feet to the fire and make me pay as much as I can, it's going to be 1500 bucks. I'll come down to 2000 I've got five of them right there. The shop wasn't ready to pay that much without knowing more about it, so Corey went up to 1200 bucks. He was trying to get the best deal he could, but the seller didn't budge. They went back and forth until finally the seller settled for Corey's offer of 1500 bucks just to get Rick off his back for that Grammy thing. After buying the sword, Corey was not at peace and was restlessly waiting for the expert who was out of town during the appraisal. Finally, he got to meet up with Mike Yamasaki, the expert, and Corey explained how he took a shot in the dark and bought the sword without knowing if it's actually worth the money. So, after taking a small glimpse at it, Mike recognized it as a samurai sword and told Corey the history of the sword. He stated that after World War II, around 3 million Japanese swords were taken out of Japan by the occupying forces. In those days, the Japanese warriors, also known as samurai, were skilled professional fighters, and the samurai sword was like their badge of honor. If you didn't have one, no way you could call yourself a samurai, man. Then Mike decided to inspect the sword and took a closer look at it. This is the proper way to take apart a Japanese sword. They've been doing this style for centuries. Well, after the inspection was done, the expert discovered that the sword belonged to a super important samurai with ties to Japan's imperial family, probably from the fifth generation. Now, here was the interesting part. The Yasutsugu family only worked for high-level samurai, and their signature mark, like a logo, was detailed on the handle. It's the family crest of the Tokugawa family, who ruled Japan for a couple of centuries. And if anyone tried using it without permission, they'd end up losing their heads, along with their whole damn family. Scary, right? Well, it seemed that the sword had some serious historical value. Now, the big question is, how much is it worth in today's time? After considering the condition, the expert estimated that it can be restored for around $3,000. But here's the exciting part. After the restoration and blade sharpening, Corey could potentially sell it for a whopping $15,000. That's a tenfold increase from what he paid for it initially. So there you have it. Corey took a risk, bought the sword without knowing its true value, and it turned out to be a jackpot. But that was indeed a risky game. But does it always turn out to be luck or sometimes they just lose everything? Well, we'll see this in the next episode where a customer from season 16 walks into the pawn shop, hoping that the shop will take his 1700s flintlock pistol off his hands. This thing is ancient and looks fascinating for being so damn old. But the funny part, the gun looked puke colored. Did you do the amazing restoration on it? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the history of this gun. Now, the invention of the flintlock pistol back in 1615 was a total game changer in warfare. But here's the thing. Hector, the seller, had no idea about the pistol's origin. It was passed down to him by his father, and he's looking to score 500 bucks for it. But Rick has some concerns. It's pretty darn obvious that this thing has been messed with. So he decided to call in his arms expert, who knows his stuff when it comes to guns. Finally, the expert Alex Kramer arrived. He's the CEO of International Military Antiques. He takes one look at the pistol and straight up calls it ugly. Ouch. Apparently, some shoddy paint job messed up the gun, and it can't even be opened properly. But hey, on the bright side, the details and engravings on the pistol are top notch. They got this fancy style called grotesque with all these weird looking human and animal shapes. And the markings underneath are high quality too. Too bad the paint on the lock is so thick that they can't even see the gun maker's name. That would have helped figure out when and where it was made. Now Rick's super curious if this thing is actually worth anything. 
The expert takes a quick look and comes up with an estimate. I think it would be about $1,000. Once we restore it, if I can get it functional, I think it's at least 3000 With that estimated value in mind, Rick decides to make an offer. So I will give you 150 bucks and relieve you of your problem. <laughs> Would you do 250 Damn, just 150 bucks? Even though Alex said it was worth five grand, Rick always pulls out the excuse that it's hard to sell and there aren't many buyers out there. After a short negotiation, the seller settles for a mere $200. I know, unbelievable and kind of unacceptable. But since the gun isn't in great working condition, I guess it was the best they could do. Rick decided to take a chance and handed the gun over for restoration. Will it hit the jackpot or lose his $200? Let's see. After a successful restoration job, Rick receives some surprising news about the gun's value. It has brought back all the original details and made it look absolutely gorgeous. And guess what? It turned out even better than expected. With all of the engraving on the brass, that grotesque mask came out really well. Oh, it did come out amazing. But Alex hasn't tested it yet because he wanted Rick to witness its sight. And the best part? If this baby shoots, Rick might get a whopping $5,000. Damn. Well, let's watch if it works. I got my headphones on, so I can't hear you. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, it worked perfect. So after successfully restoring the item and getting it in working condition, Rick could be making 5,000 bucks on an item he bought for just 200 bucks. That's a crazy profit of 4,800 bucks. Absolutely hard to believe, right? Someone even commented that Rick straight up robbed Hector in broad daylight. <laughs> Users are not holding back with their savage opinions. Well, keeping everything aside, this was indeed one of the craziest profits earned at Pawn Star Shop. Moving on. In this episode, Rick bought what he thought was a fancy Polish medal from a regular customer for a whopping $6,000. He had no clue about its real value, so he called in the military antique expert Craig Gottlieb to take a look. And what do you know? It turned out that the medal wasn't even technically Polish. Talk about Rick questioning his own existence, right? Uh, first of all, it's not technically Polish. What do you mean, not technically? To clarify things for the confused Rick, the expert spilled the beans. Turns out this metal had a Russian background. Back in 1795, Poland got divided into three parts, Prussia, Austria, and Russia. And guess who got the largest slice? Yep, Russia. This particular order was established way back in 1325, and the White Eagle is basically Poland's symbol. It's on their national emblem and everything, but they changed things up and stuck the original style of the award on top of a Russian Imperial Eagle, which has two heads. So what we got here is a Russian order, and that's what this medal represents. It's a piece of history that dates back 800 years. Pretty neat, huh? Well, neat in the sense of 800 years of Poland struggles, constantly being conquered, reconquered, and fighting for their freedom throughout their entire history. Users also shared how this whole episode reminded them of their beloved history classes back in their school days. It brought back memories of learning about the triumphs, tragedies, dramas, and even the occasional humor that filled those lessons. With the background story out of the way, Rick finally gets down to the burning question, what's the damn thing worth? Because obviously he bought it without knowing it's worth. I, I took a big shot in the dark. How big a shot? Less $6,000. I shot. can sense the tension all over his body. Finally, the expert takes a closer look at the metal and starts talking about how it was probably made in St. Petersburg by a company called the House of Bolin. And guess what? They were like the main competitors to Fabergé. So we're talking about a metal of Fabergé quality here. Crazy enough to give Rick some hope. But Craig kept going on and on about how gorgeous the metal is, making Rick all anxious and begging him to stop teasing and spill the beans about its worth. And finally, he does. Aren't you curious just like me? 30 to 40 grand. 30 to 40,000 dollars. <laughs> That's incredible. Damn, the metal is valued at around 30 to 40,000 dollars? That's awesome. And it definitely brought a big wide smile on Rick's face. But hold up. Sadly, Craig has some serious concerning news for him. Apparently, the market for this specific metal is pretty thin, meaning there's not much chance for Rick to sell it easily. Talk about a check he can't cash. But hey, Craig's always got a solution up his sleeve. So fast forward to a later date when Craig visited the pawn shop to meet Rick and brought with him some exciting news. 
he got in contact with a guy in Germany who has a box for this medal. Has the ribbon for it, and even the breast star. It's all part of a set, you see, but there's a big hole in the guy's box, specifically for the neck order. And Craig just knew that he finally found a potential buyer for the medal, someone who needs to complete their set. Now both the parties are ready to strike a deal. Craig offers him $30,000 for the item, but as we all know, Rick being the savage businessman tried to negotiate for more, even though deep down he knew that's the best he could get. An hour last time you were at. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just flipping this, right? Yes. Okay. I'll give you $30,000. Um, um, I've tried to figure out a way to complain about that price. Uh. <laughs> I'm coming out swinging here because I've got it pre-sold and I'm not making a ton here. Uh, $30,000. But Greg was fixed with the price. Obviously, Rick is not satisfied and you won't believe what he asked next. Um, $30,000, you buy me dinner? Why not? <laughs> Write me a check. <laughs> Can you believe it? Well, eventually, Rick settles for the $30,000 offer, which is five times the amount he paid for it initially. Talk about a great deal. With a free meal thrown in, too. Gotta love those perks. One person made a comment praising the honesty of Craig, noting how he offered a price range for the metal that matched its actual value of $30,000 to $40,000. Despite knowing that Rick had only paid $6,000 for it, Craig could have easily offered a lower price, like $12,000 and made a huge profit. But instead, he respected Rick and still managed to make some money while being fair. This man named Randy walked into the store with a huge ass vending machine. He believes that his machine is from the 1940s. Candy? Yes, sir. You know who loves candy, right? This guy. <laughs> well, chum, we know your love for candies, but is this deal as sweet as them? This machine sure has Chum's heart, but Randy doesn't even know if it works, and neither does he have the keys to it. Well, let us look into what Chum thinks about it and whether he thinks it would be worth the cost. Just taking a look at it, I mean, it looks pretty rough shape. There is a lot of rust on it. It sure needs a good restoration, but Randy wants $1,000 for it. Man, it already needs so much work to be done. I personally don't think it's worth investing so much, but who am I to suggest? Oh, how the chum had been schooled by experience, a lesson etched deep into the fibers of his being. Scarred by past misjudgments and Rick's scoldings, he now approached each decision with newfound caution. But hold on to your seats, for the words that spilled from the expert's lips were nothing short of astonishing. Get ready to be astonished, for the expert's revelation is nothing short of extraordinary. Okay. Whoa. Oh boy. Right? The guts are missing. So what this needs... Man, it is empty inside. All the mechanisms are missing. The expert saved Chum's ass today on this one. The expert adds that in this condition, the machine is max 300 bucks. Whoa, that was a low blow for Randy, it seems. He cannot believe the price dropped from 1,000 bucks to just 300. Up and running and painted, obviously. 4,500. 4,500, okay. Well, this machine is asking too much. Chum noticed it and got the bargain straight from $1,000 to $75, and they just shook hands on $100. Bucks. But a deal is a deal. Let's see how Chum restored it and made it a good sales machine for his own bars. Whoa! <laughs> Holy Chum Bar! <laughs> Check it out, right? That is freaking awesome! Whoa, the machine is brand new again. No one can even imagine how it was before. And I know you're thinking no one got furious here. But hey, the video doesn't end here. You see, Rick was not so happy about the sweet gift lying in the garage. Why are your candy bars in it? That's the gift it keeps on giving, Rick. That thing, you can sell it for $6,500 to take dollars off it every day for the rest of its life. Rick's fury reaches its boiling point as he directs his anger toward Chum. With intense frustration in his voice, he makes it clear that he's had enough. In a sharp and cutting tone, Rick declares that if anyone wants to get their hands on Chum's chocolate bar, they can simply take a stroll across the parking lot and purchase it directly from the store. No more concessions or accommodations. The message is clear. Rick has drawn a line in the sand, leaving Chum to face the consequences of his actions. It's a harsh ultimatum that hangs heavily in the air, leaving Chum to contemplate the future of their strained relationship. Will Chum take the opportunity to make amends, or will the rift between them widen further? Only time will tell how this explosive situation will unfold. Ah, the timeless dance of irritation between Chum and Rick, an intricate routine that never fails to provoke a symphony of exasperation. As a well-worn melody played on a perpetual loop, Chum's knack for pushing Rick's buttons has become a legendary saga of vexation and amusement. With each encounter, their interactions tread the line between exasperated sighs and affectionate eye rolls, a delicate balance that keeps the audience captivated. The sparks of frustration fly freely, igniting a wild dynamic that has become an integral part of the show's charm. 
So, dear observer, prepare yourself for yet another chapter in the saga of Chum and Rick's fierce relationship, where irritation and amusement intertwine in a dance that never ceases to entertain. Did you know that Chum's not just passionate about candies, he is passionate about diving as well. You can't even imagine what he buys next. He goes to buy a sailboat! Yes, you heard it right, a full sailboat. Rick was unhappy about the candy machine. You can't even imagine how he's gonna react to this deal. Give you that, um, minus a little bit of paint and you know a little glue and some elbow grease, I think it's in great condition. In the realm of high stakes negotiations, a pivotal moment emerged when Chumley laid his cards on the table, offering a seemingly irresistible deal for a remarkable boat priced at $7,000. But Chum couldn't agree on this price. It was too much. The air crackled with anticipation as the weight of the proposition hung in the balance, threatening to tip the scales of Rick's patience. It was a make-or-break moment that had the potential to send shockwaves through their long-standing relationship. The stakes were set, and the tension mounted like a pressure cooker nearing its boiling point. Could this be the tipping point that would send Rick over the edge, leading him to unleash his wrath upon Chum Lee? The suspense was palpable, and we are eagerly awaiting the outcome of this risky transaction. Chum made a really nice bargain, and came to $3,800 as the closing price. The boat, I realized I was going to need somewhere to park. Since it's such a beauty, a better place than right in front of the pawn shop. All right, start right there. Oh boy, get ready for the inevitable fireworks when Rick lays eyes on a massive boat about to be parked right in front of the pawn shop. You just know trouble's brewing. Rick's face turns crimson with anger as he witnesses the chaos ensuing in the parking lot. Shouting fills the air. Ropes are flailing about, and the situation is spiraling out of control. Now, it's up to you to decide how Rick will react. Will he burst out of the shop like a raging bull, ready to lay down the law and restore order? Or will he take a moment to cool down and approach the situation with a level head? Brace yourself for the dramatic clash that lies ahead. What insanity do you guys have going on? What's going on here? But hold on. There's a twist in this tale. Chum steps forward, determined to explain his actions, and hopeful that Rick will actually commend him for his endeavors. With a mix of confidence and trepidation, Chum begins to share his motivations and the reasoning behind his seemingly chaotic actions. He lays it all out, hoping that Rick will see the brilliance behind his plan. What do you think? How will Rick respond? Will he give Chum the recognition and praise he desires, surprising everyone with his understanding and appreciation? Or will he continue to be infuriated, dismissing Chum's explanation as nothing more than an attempt to cover up his reckless behavior? Here comes a roller coaster of emotions as this captivating scene unfolds before your eyes. I need a spot to park your 27-foot sailboat that I just bought you. Oh. A look of profound disappointment washes over Rick's face his eyes conveying a mixture of frustration and exasperation. He can't help but feel let down by Chumley once again. With a raised voice, Rick unleashes his discontent, emphasizing the absurdity of the low price Chumley has set for the boat. An abiding remark, Rick suggests that if the boat is being sold at such a bargain, one can only imagine the true condition and quality of the vessel. He acknowledges the undeniable truth that a good boat worth its weight and value would never be sold at such a low cost. The disappointment in Rick's voice is palpable as he grapples with the reality of the situation and his frustration with Chumley's decision-making. It's a moment that highlights the clash of expectations and the unrelenting nature of their dynamic. Poor Corey gets dragged into it for no apparent reason. Supposed to be a manager, you handle this. We're not gonna have a boat in the parking lot. Put the boat somewhere. And where I'd like you to put it, I really can't say. Poor Chum, yet again, not appreciated for any efforts. As if the mounting list of Chum's blunders wasn't already enough to incite Rick's fury, an air of suspense fills the room as Chum finds himself teetering on the precipice of yet another foolish choice. Tension crackles in the atmosphere as we hold our breath, waiting to see if Chum will repeat his pattern of misguided decisions. The weight of anticipation hangs heavy, like a dark cloud looming overhead. In the midst of this suspenseful moment, Rick's anger simmers beneath the surface, ready to erupt like a volcano. The stakes are high, and the consequences of Chum's potential misstep could be dire. Prepare to have your mind blown. Have you ever heard of a street-legal pirate ship? No worries if you haven't, because it was a revelation for me too. Picture this, a captivating vessel that sails through the streets instead of the high seas. This audacious individual is actually selling a pirate ship that doesn't navigate water, but instead driven around during parades and events. The sheer novelty of this concept is enough to make your jaw drop. Can you imagine the spectacle of a fully decked out pirate ship roaming the streets, spreading swashbuckling cheer and captivating onlookers? It's an unconventional twist on the nautical adventure, 
where imagination takes flight on wheels instead of waves. A fascinating change that challenges traditional boundaries and sparks the imaginations of all who encounter it. For a ship, you can actually drive 60 miles an hour on the highway. This is awesome. In a moment of anticipation, Chum captures a picture of the pirate ship and eagerly sends it to Rick, seeking his seal of approval. It's no secret that Chum Lee's heart is set on acquiring this extraordinary vessel. However, Rick's response reveals a familiar pattern. He doesn't always share Chum's level of enthusiasm. Despite Chum Lee's unwavering excitement, Rick's support wavers, casting a shadow of doubt over Chum's aspirations. Nevertheless, Amidst the uncertainty, Chum Lee embarks on an unforgettable adventure on the ship, immersing himself in a world of whimsy and joy. The pirate ship becomes a catalyst for moments of pure bliss as Chum Lee discovers a sense of freedom and exhilaration that he has never experienced before. It's a testament to the power of chasing dreams, even in the face of skepticism. Join Chum Lee as he embraces the sheer thrill of sailing on that ship, creating memories that will last a lifetime. If I can make a deal, Rick will think I'm the man. As the wind tussled Chumley's hair and the weather played its part, a symphony of elements converged to enhance his adoration for the float even further. Each gust of wind whispered its approval as if urging him to embrace the exhilaration that danced in the air. The perfect weather conditions seemed to align, creating an enchanting atmosphere that heightened his connection with the pirate ship. With every passing moment, Chum Lee's affection for the vessel grew as if it were infused with magical essence. In the midst of it all, Chum Lee savored the joy and freedom that enveloped him, cherishing the sensation of pure bliss as he sailed through the streets on the ship that had captured his heart. As Chum Lee eagerly awaits Rick's response, hoping for validation and support, his heart sinks when he reads the crushing words that appear on his screen. Rick's text delivers a blow that pierces Chum Lee's enthusiasm, leaving his spirit wounded and his dreams deflated. The message, like a dagger to the heart, shatters the joy and optimism Chum Lee had been clinging to. The heartbreaking reality sets in as he realizes that Rick's words don't align with his own deep-rooted passion for the pirate ship. It's a moment of profound disappointment as Chum Lee grapples with the stark contrast between his own excitement and Rick's lack of endorsement. Emotions swirl within him, hurt, confusion, and a tinge of resentment. I'm sure he's not going to buy it. He doesn't have any money on him. But he's an idiot. Amidst the tangled web of desires and concerns, Corey possesses a keen understanding of Chum Lee's nature. He recognizes that once the request to abstain is made, Chum Lee is unlikely to proceed with the purchase. In this aspect, Rick's fears find resonance in Corey's assessment. The rational part of their minds acknowledges the validity of Rick's concerns. Even if Chum Lee were to succumb to impulsive desires and make a foolish decision, the stark truth remains. The price of the pirate ship far surpasses his financial means. It looms above his allowance like an insurmountable hurdle, a barrier that cannot be breached without dire consequences. The clash between longing and practicality creates a dilemma that Chum Lee must confront head on. Will he heed the warnings and let go of the unattainable dream? Or will he risk it all in pursuit of his heart's desire? The outcome hangs precariously in the balance as Chum Lee grapples with the weight of responsibility and the allure of the forbidden. The owner wanted $250,000 for it. Man, that is a little too much. The last bargain he could agree on was $190,000, man. That is still so much money. Chum Lee was so sure that Rick would want to get it, until he checks his phone. The Do not buy the float. That was Rick, my boss. The man had been driving Chum Lee around all of the efforts and explaining it. And all for what, man? Just to get rejected on a text message? Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. Man, I really feel so bad for Chum Lee. Everyone gives an attitude to my boy here, and he just takes it all. Well, enough of Chum Lee. Sometimes even Rick makes a mistake, and the great Harrison is not at all happy about this one. A captivating scene unfolds as Bill strides into the store, his presence immediately catching the attention of the Pawn Stars crew. In his possession, he carries a Wells Fargo strongbox, an intriguing artifact that exudes a sense of mystery and historical significance. As if that weren't enough, he adds to the spectacle by unveiling antique balls and chains, further piquing the curiosity of everyone present. Bill, confident in his offering, sets the price at a hefty $2,000, a sum that raises eyebrows and sets the stage for a fascinating negotiation. So we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. Okay, you do have a The anticipation builds as the Pawn Stars team contemplates the value and potential of this unique collection. 
Will they be able to strike a favorable deal that satisfies both Bill's expectations and their own interests? With his vast knowledge and years of experience, Rick's expertise comes to the forefront as he steps into the bargaining arena. Determined to navigate the deal without relying on external advice, confident in his abilities, he draws upon his extensive understanding of historical artifacts and market trends to assess the true value of Bill's offering. Rick's sharp mind is like a well-honed tool dissecting the details and uncovering the hidden gems within the collection. As the negotiation unfolds, his eloquence and persuasive arguments come alive, revealing a masterful display of wit and intellect. Rick's knowledge becomes a formidable weapon, allowing him to strike a delicate balance between fair pricing and maximizing the potential of the transaction. It's a testament to his experience and a showcase of his ability to thrive in the world of bargaining, showcasing the power of a sharp mind in the pursuit of a favorable deal. Electrically welded. See how these have arcs from an arc welder? Sure, okay. Okay, and my other big concern? As Rick utters the phrase, other concern, a flicker of suspicion dances in his eyes indicating that there may be more at play than just the handcuffs. His discerning gaze scrutinizes the items within the Wells Fargo strongbox, sensing something amiss. What could it be? A forged antique? A replica masquerading as a genuine artifact? The anticipation mounts, and the negotiation takes an unexpected turn as Rick dives deeper into his investigation. Determined to unveil the secrets concealed within the box, Rick further adds that the box might actually be real, but the stuff in it is absolutely not, so that made him a little concerned about it, to which the man explains that the stuff was not in the box, he just kept it all in there. You always see a Wells Fargo strong box and an old Hollywood Western, so this will definitely get a lot of interest from collectors. The bargain started at $1,200, but hey, we know Rick. He is damn good at bargains. He finally sealed the deal at 450 But obviously, we need a piece of expert advice over here. Mark, the man with all his knowledge and his beard, is called back to the store. Have you already bought this? That sounds bad. Mark further tells Rick the bad news. It was a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Looks like Harrisons get pissed off on this show, but hey, Another day, another lesson to be learned, right? Kicking off with this episode, which is sure to give you quite a jolt. Hey, how's it going? The episode just starts with a casual conversation between Rick and an old man. But look what he's got. Yes, my friends, you just laid eyes on an 1884 Colt that was used in the Wyoming Range War, also known as the Johnson County War. Goes with it. There's nothing like a good book after a good shooting. That's what I always <laughs> say. And not to forget the book that comes with it. I mean, you've got to keep the rare flock together. Rick, as usual, begins his quiz, asked a whole lot of questions before investing his money into something that a normal person would have bought in a heartbeat. So how exactly did you get the gun? My father got this from the great-great-granddaughter of Fred Koch. Are these many questions ever asked while I go to sell something antique? Maybe. How would I know? I've just gone to the shops to buy something, never to sell anything. But wait, it seems like he practiced it the whole night, answered all the questions like a pro. That man did better than the rest of us would do in our lives. Tough college times. Wait. What did my eyes just witness? Rick narrating the whole Wyoming Range War story. Basically, large cattle barons feuding with really small cattle ranchers. The small guys were stealing cattle. It felt like a whole history lesson to me. I must say, Rick does have some insane knowledge about antiques. The way he narrated the whole thing was nothing less than an informative history class. Not gonna lie. Moving further, we see Rick's intelligence as he checked all the details provided on the document just like a professional would. This has got 45 caliber. This is a 45 caliber. It's a five and a half inch barrel. That's a five and a half inch barrel. With this line, when you throw on a personal story that actually ties a cow to a gun, that's the kind of thing collectors love. I can see he clearly knows how to hit the proper note. But when you throw in a personal story that actually ties a cowboy to a gun, that's the kind of thing collectors love. Without a second thought, the man quoted $55,000 for the gun. What do you think? Are Rick and the old man on the same page? Well, for you to know that, you have to continue watching. I'd like $55,000. 55000 And obviously, before getting such a huge amount out of his pocket, he wanted a second opinion on the matter for which he called an expert. Get someone down here. He'll tell me if it actually belonged to this guy. To be honest, I really don't get it. How can one identify if it's original or fake by just looking at some words written on a piece of paper? Anyway, who am I to say anything? What we have here, it's really hard to make that connection. Some facts were served right there. Like clearly, who else if not Rick would know more than for how much something like that goes in his shop. And you know, Pawn Stars is all about who bargains best to make the most profit. So let's see who gets to cut the cake tonight. And just when he thought things couldn't get crazier, Rick dropped the price and set his bet to 1500 bucks. And all that effort went to waste right in front of your eyes. 
Yeah, I don't, I'm just not gonna be able to do that. I think maybe I'll see if I can maybe get some more provenance. That was pretty obvious. No one would want to sell an antique for this measly amount of money. Definitely not a very profitable deal. And with that deal went flying Rick out of Rick's hands. But in this next episode, this person walks in with a really interesting gun. But how interesting? You're about to find out. Yeah, it's like something James Bond would wear. Yeah, right. You just saw that, huh? But that's not out of a James Bond movie. That thing is as real as it gets. What can I help you with? I'm here to sell my ring pistol today. Well, you know how a gun never stays in the shop for long, be it whatever shape or size. But this thing is something I've never seen or even heard of before. Have you ever seen a pistol ring? Boy, you're looking at it right now. This is something definitely worthy of adding to the antique collection list. Come on, you have to agree with me. Everything about this pistol ring is antique, from loading it to the trigger to its hammer. This thing is a killer, literally. You know what? If I ever went undercover on a mission, I would definitely carry this cute little devil. James Bond, we just found your vibe, and I know Rick would agree with me too. Yeah, that man seems very particular about the price he's going to ask for that dangerous ring. I'm looking to get 9000 I'll use it to buy some of the things I collect more often. I personally would wear that ring everywhere. It's an all-in-one combo, kind of a hidden treasure who can double up like your personal bodyguard. It's unreal how cool this thing is. But hey, did Rick just contradict me? Wear them just for fashion. Damn. Rick has got a good sense of humor, not gonna lie. Seriously, getting hit by that mini pistol ring would definitely hurt your ego hard, man. It's also seriously a gun. I mean, it would really hurt getting shot with this thing. And oh, I kid you not when I say that the man clearly did his homework right. He literally asked for nine grand in the blink of an eye. I mean, that piece truly is a showstopper. But that expensive? Damn. A nine grand. They're, they're pretty rare. So what happened is that the deal took an intense turn, and Rick, being the smartest in this show, had to prove it. So before finalizing the deal, he wanted a bit of expert advice. I mean, that's always better than regretting later, right? So let's see what the expert had to say about this antique pistol ring. The European gunsmiths, uh, they were making all kinds of little weird things. This is the Imperial Protector. Basically. Looks like this tiny mean machine has taken down quite a few people in the past. So it must cost a bomb, but let's hear it from the expert himself. For 11.5. Okay. Thanks, Tony. I really appreciate it. Whoa. I never expected that. 11.5K? That's crazy. And just look at the size of that thing. That thing is golden for sure. But as you know, Rick plays by his own rules, and I'm curious to know what he has to offer. I'll give you 3000 for it. <laughs> no, no, can't do it. Okay, so Rick is trying to settle the deal for three grand, but bro, that's like not even half the price the seller asked. Do you think the man will accept the offer? For someone who knew a great deal about the pistol ring, I don't think this man is going to budge. But Rick wasn't ready to give up or give in as yet. So do you think they'd both settle on the same grounds? Who do you think is going to win this round? Well, let me put your anxiety to rest. For here comes the moment you're waiting for. As amazing as this thing is, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. And just like that, Rick missed the chance and saw the extraordinary collector's pride walk right out of his door. But what happened in this next episode is even crazier. Working with an instrument maker and got really, really interested with the harmonica. You know how music instruments can be great collectibles. In which case, what do you think about an ancient instrument that has an emotional connection to it? Does it help double up the price? Well, I don't know about you, but I have never seen a shining gold M. Honer harmonica. We've all played a harmonica once in our lives. Right, we have. Um, and we thought we were good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who don't know who Matthias Honer is, here's a quick history lesson for you. Honer was a trained watchmaker born in Germany. And his company, Math Honer AG, is the oldest and largest producer of harmonicas in the world. If you want to know more about this masterpiece, here's Rick for you. So apparently the watchmaker was so blown away by the piece that this is what happened. So he saw the writing on the wall, uh, but he was also working with an instrument maker and got really, really interested with the harmonica. Rick's knowledge never fails to amaze me. There's no question that he is a master of his job, and his trade skills are even better. But is this going to be a jackpot or a lost cause? Before Rick states his price, he found a problem with the musical piece. We get in the ballpark. Okay, all right. It's plastic, and it's not yeah. in great shape. I don't know, it's not too bad a shape. The cardboard's coming off. Oh no, 
that's going to majorly affect the price of this beautiful piece right here. So while the seller was holding on to a grand $500, what Rick pitched was unbelievable. Here's 75 bucks for it. <laughs> it got 75 bucks. Wow. I would feel humiliated if I was that harmonica right now. I mean, come on, man. It's not that bad. But what can I say? Rick knows better. And the seller wasn't ready to back up and even had a genuine reason for it. Dollars to fill my truck up with gas right now. I can't take 75. I find the man reasonable. The least you can do is compensate his gas. But as you know, there are no emotions involved in business. Rick's not taken aback by anything and sticks with his price, but he failed to grab the deal. I think he wouldn't mind much though because the harmonica was plastic and it was also peeling off in some places. So sadly, the seller needed to go back home with a broken instrument, and he couldn't even make enough money for gas anyway. Next up, we got this interesting thing that you'd never expect at a pawn shop. The guy just pulled in the parking lot with a boat he wants to sell. So Chum and I... Yes, it's a freaking boat! What you're looking at is a 1958 Sea Flight Glastron, and this is no common sight, y'all. Rick and Chum came to take a look at the huge and fascinating boat, and it looks like they already like what they're looking at. You seven Chevy, didn't they? Sure did. <laughs> is it a convertible? And how can something start without Chumley's irrelevant questions, right? Like always, he was more worried about the boat being convertible or not. Well, Chum, you definitely cannot expect everything to be fancy, okay? Despite that, I can't help but love Chumley's confidence. Meanwhile, the seller has made up his mind to demand a hefty $10,500 for the boat. Let's hope he can make just as much from the master of negotiation. And this time, the item in question was a timeless beauty created in 1958, standing tall, defying the effects of time. Whoever maintained it surely did it with the utmost care and dedication. Great work right there, but I think someone is already getting busy coming up with the numbers. It looks just like the 57 Chevy I got for the old man's birthday. It's definitely tempting because- Rick's already deciding how he was gonna pitch this look-alike a 57 Chevy. This Glastron boat is awesome, but boats are tough to sell, so it has to be a home. Like he already said, boats are money pits. I mean, nobody would want to keep this huge boat in their homes as an antique, quite rare as the word suggests itself. But this seller is definitely giving Rick tough competition. With all that USP knowledge he was throwing about, he came in here ready to face the pawnbroking world. Do you know why? Because it was a little 17-foot boat. No, because it was fiberglass. No more wood boats. Wood boats were moving out. But what happened next was totally unexpected. 10-5. Ooh, um... In an unexpected turn, the owner of the boat bravely revealed a startling price tag, $10,500. Wow, that's crazy. What do you think Rick is going to do? Will he buy it or break it? I don't even want to make you an offer. There's too much work that's got to be done for me to make anything. Did you see that? Rick didn't even make an attempt to convince the donor to accept a lesser price. But that's exactly what the show is all about, expecting the unexpected. But you cannot miss this museum piece that just made its entry into the shop today. A man brought in an ancient coin, a portrait of Julius Caesar from the month before he was assassinated. Well, I have a coin here. It's a portrait coin of Julius Caesar from the month before he got assassinated. But before that, quick history lesson. Did you know Caesar was the first living person to be depicted on Roman currency? Back then, this honor was only reserved for the gods. So you can imagine Caesar's position in the society. So you know that having him on a coin is quite exclusive, and any historical coin collector would be yearning to get their hands on this coin. And it would do what was necessary to preserve the Republic. Okay, and no matter what he did in office, Rick was taken in by the intriguing offer, and his sincerity came through, creating a favorable environment for a possible deal. Rick, though, sticks to his strategy since he was logical. As you know, the man is a smart specialist who always seeks professional advice before taking major action. But let's see what the price on offer is. How much were you looking to get out of it? I want 4400 please. Okay. I like this man's confidence and how he's so adamant about the asking price, exactly the way it should be. The style is correct. Everything is right. Okay. It's perfectly genuine. The expert's analysis is giving us a ray of hope with each passing second. So let's see what the experts have to say. $1,500. Retail? Retail. Wait, what was that? $1,500? Are you kidding me? I thought that coin was a big deal. But what just happened? It's ridiculous. I mean, sometimes you can never explain how things turn out to be in the pawn world. Just like this episode where a man walked in claiming to have a 1951 Yankees team signed ball. 1951 Yankees 
team signed baseball. For those who may not know, the New York Yankees of the 1940s and 1950s were the most dominant team in baseball history. They won 10 World Series titles only between 1947 and 1962, including their five consecutive World Series victories from the 1949 to 1953 season. However, things have now taken a turn and the glory remains in history. Coming back to the item in concern, the seller also claimed that the ball had the signatures of around 22 to 23 Yankee players from around that time. And out of all of them, it had the signatures of Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle. About 22, 23 signatures on the The year 1951 holds a special place in baseball history, as it was Joe DiMaggio's final season and Mickey Mantle's first. Also, Yankees won their 14th World Series that year. Buckle up, because this episode is sure to amaze you. My grandfather went to a game in 1951 with my mother and uh, received the- The seller said that it was his grandfather who managed to get this iconic baseball. According to him, his grandfather went to a game in 1951 with his mother and received the autographs from a friend of his that was involved with the team. Well, sounds fair enough to me. Baseball doesn't really mean a lot to me. It's got some family heritage, but it's to baseball. I wonder why so many people want to sell something that has an emotional connection with them. But the seller's reason behind selling such an iconic ball seems pretty fair to me. This would be perfect for the company softball game. Charmway, I'm fixing to hit you. Charlie was trying to play the fool, but Benjamin remained unaffected, steadfastly focused on the business at hand. Benjamin saw nothing but the business and got right back into it. I don't trust this guy. I don't trust nobody. Especially when you're trying to sell me. Benjamin, I can feel you totally. It's not like we don't trust anybody, but it's always better to be sure when there's a ton of money involved. No doubt the expert had to be called in. I do believe that this is a genuine 1951 Yankees baseball. Whoa, it looks like there's some good news for the man, and we might see some bills going out of the shop. But wait, don't be sure. You never know when the deal goes south. I think $3,000 is a reasonable amount for the ball. With audacity that leaves me breathless, a staggering demand of $3,000 was quoted for the ball. And it's quite obvious as well. After all the authentication and the proof, anyone would ask for that kind of money. They fired about $800. But wait, what? Benjamin just quoted $800? That's it? No one would sell it for that much, Benjamin. But he was in this business before most of us, and I assume he'd know better. So these were some of the times deals got out of hand on Pawn Stars. So which one of these intrigued you the most? Let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more such videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, guys. Take it off. Take it Seth, easy, Seth, Seth, please. Doing? Take it easy. What are you doing? Seth, Seth! <laughs> Ashley has pushed Seth too far. Something's gotta change. Hang on, cowboy. <laughs> Oops, fire! Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. In a thrilling episode of Hardcore Pawn, a car in the parking lot finds itself in a rather heated situation. No, we're not exaggerating. You'll see. We were really concerned. The car's totally on fire right now. Yeah. Should we try to get a hose over there? It's right underneath those power lines, which is our power lines. It's burning so bad that it's going to burn the electrical wires. We call 911. Rich is directing traffic. It was right next to our power lines. What are we supposed to do? Isn't that a chaotic scene that feels right out of an action movie? However, in the middle of all the frenzy, check out this guy. You won't want to miss this. As his car is in flames, this guy is pulling out his fire helmet, his fire jacket, fire equipment. I'm thinking, what the f is going on? All right, dude, this thing's starting to go. Now we got to come up with another plan. Out of there. Man, that's going to cut up those power lines. Less, it's time to act. That fire could get worse. How about grabbing your phone and dialing 911? You know to keep things safe and sound. Makes you wonder what these guys go through. He's inside of the hood like it's nothing at all. Because of the wonderful effort, the Detroit Fire Department, they saved the day. There's a recall on that car, I haven't taken it in yet. You were stupid. Uh, that's... You were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad day for not to take in your car for a recall. The toilet. All right, who's in the mood to take a big dump? If yes, these two ladies have the 1955 rare toilet. What? Here's the unusual bathroom adventure. How much do you want for this toilet? 400. They don't make them anymore. And I saw a pink one online and they wanted 
Seth lays down the law. In case you missed the memo, we don't do toilets here, so these ladies might want to flush their deal elsewhere. How about 50 bucks? $10? Oh, my goodness. Really? Well, I don't want to put it back in the car. I know this is a crappy old toilet. Paying $10 to get under my brother's skin is all worth it. Ashley sure knows how to annoy her brother, but this time, she might have taken it up a notch. Anyway, just have a look at how he decides to take care of the toilet deal. Would you like to double your money? Who wouldn't? Here's 20. Meet me outside. See you out there. Bobby J, bring it this way. Take it Seth, easy, Seth, please. Seth! Ah! Seth! Mechanical Bull. Ah, the nostalgia of the Wild West, where bull riding and tough cowboys reign supreme. But it seems like someone didn't get the memo that times have changed. It's time to get with the program, people. Girl, we're trying to sell our mechanical bull. Why do you have it? We had a, a Western themed restaurant bar before, and uh, that was the theme. We put it, the bull in the, into the bar, okay. and uh, now we've recently remodeled and changed themes, so now we've got to sell the bull. Well, slap on those cowboy hats. We've got ourselves a scene here. But seriously, who's taking bets on whether they can wrangle a decent price for that rodeo-style bull riding? How much do they cost? They cost around fifteen to 20000 How much do you want? 15000 If I was to buy this brand new or buy this used from you, it's the same price. Rental companies rent these out for seven fifty a day. There's a lot of revenue potential. So $2,000 would tempt you? Two no. Oh dear, it's quite a sight to witness these macho men taking their bull back home, but hang on, because Ashley just might have a surprise up her sleeve. 3,000 right now. 45. 31. 39, you pack it up. That's my bottom dollar. 34. I can't do it. Sorry, good luck. Casket car. You won't believe this one. A man seeks to part ways with his unconventional ride, a casket car, hoping to strike a deal with the pawn shop. I kid you not, to watch for yourself. So explain to you why you bought this? Well, we're really into a Halloween, and it's basically the ultimate prop. I mean, our house is decorated, I mean, really? completely in, inside and out, all year round. And by far, I believe this is one of the best vehicle we've ever owned. It's an everyday car for us. Well, Halloween enthusiasts, just let me know if it's the ultimate prop or not. But just wait, aren't we all curious if there was something inside the trunk? 30 years old, it's still pretty good. Are you selling it with the coffin? Uh, yeah, we could do that. I mean, obviously. Is that a fake coffin? No, this or? is a real real coffin out of a funeral parlor. Did it come with the casket? No, I, I gave it to my wife on Valentine's Day. Really? Oh. Things took an unexpected spooky turn. What's going on here? Maybe it's time we shift our attention from the creepy casket dummies and focus on the deal at hand. How about 1500 What? Are you joking? He sees the value in a classic car. <laughs> What's gonna it going to do? How about 25 with the How coffin? wait? You're really seriously? Thinking about it, yes. 1600 How about 18 1650 like... No. Monster Deals. It's that time of year again, sales season. Just like any other shop, our pawnbrokers were pulling out all the stops to lure in customers. Get ready. I had the best idea. This is huge. Try to tap this one, Seth. Bet you can't. What? What? Oh my God. Oh my goodness, brace yourselves. Ashley unleashed a marketing masterstroke that left everyone stunned. Get ready for the jaw-dropping details of her grand plan. This is your great idea. There you go, monster deal. What is this? Seth thinks he's the only one that knows how to bring business in the store. This is my marketing technique. Come on, look at this thing. Do you it's see what's cute. wrong with it? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Our pawn queen was positively thrilled with the idea. But Seth, well, let's just say he didn't quite share the same level of enthusiasm. Here's what he thought. Monster deals. What the f does monster deals even mean? Big deals. Their eyes are going to be drawn to that. It's way too small. You can't even see it. Anytime a giant gorilla is on anybody's roof, it's going to bring attention. They like the gorilla. Yeah! Horse. Gather around for an interesting story, folks. We've got a woman who had taken her horses to the nearby pawn shop in the hopes of getting some fast money. What an unusual move. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, watch out. Watch out. We're coming. Wait, wait, wait. Wow, I haven't seen it all. It's a donkey, too. Woo! <laughs> I can't Let's go. Side, okay, I'll meet you right out there. Let's head outdoors, folks. Those horses might get rowdy in the shop, 
And guess what? It's not just one horse. Take a look at this scene. I don't know how she did that. She was pretty good. So we got a donkey, we got pony. Pony <laughs> and, and a, a, horse. a horse. Do you have a saddle? I got a girl saddle. Do you have a towel? <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. This is the one we need to buy. It's not that far of a fall. Our pond queen seems to fancy those pony sparkles. Time for some horse trading, folks. Let's see if a fair deal makes it way into the picture. I'll yeah. split the second one with you. 125? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, I just bought a horse. The kids will have fun. I think the family will have fun. I think I should start to learn how to ride it. That was really crazy, you know? I never had horses in the store before, especially on a stripper pole. Now I'm glad we ended up buying it. Hovercraft. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Well, it does look like a grown up street. And where we're at, right? Obviously a pawn shop. So it's going to be a hard, hard sell. I do seven grand today. I mean, sweet. There's no question about it. I like it. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to help you out with that. Boxing kit. The take 600 for it. 400 bucks. No, can't do it. 450, 60, 70, 500. Very much. I appreciate it. Redneck. Who said cycling was only a part of childhood? Not for this man. He brings in a super stretched redneck tricycle with a gear shifter that doubles as a beer tap. Yeah, you heard that right. Did you build this? Yep, me and my buddy built it. It's got customized spinners. It's got transmission. It's got reverse and everything. So in other words, you couldn't ride it as a bicycle. Nope, strictly with the engine. Took a little bit here, a little bit there, and put it all together, and this is what we got. It's a head scratcher. Our visitors' chicken coop plans might baffle us, but let's stay on track and dive into the intriguing deal at hand. So here's what Les has to add to this. Can you show me how it works? Yeah, let's yes, I works. can. Yes, sure. I can. Get out the way. Yes, sir. Stop. Hold it down to get it started. Oh! Well, ain't that some <laughs> Son of a Just when things were getting interesting, that tricycle decided it had enough and broke down on us. Well, isn't that some hard luck this time? That's a dirty shame that it broke. It is hey, a dirty shame. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> a lot dirty, bring it back when you get some... I will do that. Another yeah. cord in there. This was one of those situations I would have liked to have helped Dirty, but nothing I could do. 